Hello, hello. Welcome to 3D6 Down the Line. It is episode 49 of the Halls of Ardenvul Mega Dungeon by Richard Barton using the Old School Essential System by Necrotic Gnome. As always, I'm your ref. My name is John. Going around the horn, we have tonight. Hi, I'm Mike. <laughs> I'm playing Darius Vile, the first level assassin. We would normally have David, who is playing the second iteration of Rin the Elf, but he is dead to us tonight, so we will have to do without him. <laughs> oh, so sad. Uh, I am Matt. I play Avaricius, the left hand of Lysion. I am a sixth level cleric. Yeah, go ahead and rub it in, bud. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know who you are, man. I don't even know who you are. They come and go so fast these days. Right? It's hard to keep track. Of. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Ted. I play Mortis J. Gobliano, your weekly cup of steaming hot goblin. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> I don't like that. Right. So, as mm. you may have noticed, if you're watching the video rather than listening, we have a couple of new headers here for uh, new characters. So, we should do some explaining. Uh, first of all, uh, there's been ongoing conversation, fantastic conversations going on in the new discourse. If you haven't joined up for the public discord, you should definitely do so. The link will be in the description below. But in those descriptions, we had some a lot of great conversations about the deaths of two um, of our characters last session. One was a long time favorite who's been there since the beginning. Gorand, the dwarf played by Mike, passed away, unfortunately, eaten by a giant snapping turtle under the water. And in addition, uh, David's new character, we lost Onwe a couple sessions ago, but he had replaced him with Rin the Elf, also ended up dying as a result of a very vicious snapping turtle. And uh, at the time, mid-session last time, they both created new characters. Mike had one in the wings from all the way back in session zero when we were making backup characters. So he brought his assassin into play. He has renamed that assassin Darius instead of Dredgen. So just everyone be be aware that's his name now, and that uh, David had originally created a uh, his twin brother uh, to Darius, who was named Kato, who was a thief, and then we had a bunch of discussion over Discord, our own private Discord, and uh, David decided to switch once again to do the classic classic technique of when you were a kid playing D, &D <laughs> is to create an exact duplicate of, of the character that you were playing. <laughs> so we once again have Rin part two, uh, an elf. It, it is actually a different person. Um, he is, his name is like the echo or upside down. I don't know. It's David being David, uh, his version of Rin. Um, but he does have, uh, he did reroll complete, uh, 3d6 down the line, new scores. So the scores are different. I'll put up the scores right now. So everyone can see what the loadout is right now for Darius and Rin. Um, they're way and, worse. David's scores are way worse than his first Rin, right? Uh, well, yeah, they're, they're still pretty good. He's got a strength of 15 and a con of 13. Um, but yeah, all in all, they're, they're a little bit uh, worse, but Totally capable elf, so not a How big deal. How many fours does he have? No fours. That would I've got be one. That'd be you. You, what, you have your you... <laughs> spill it, spill it, Mike. What's your four in? Four yeah. in wisdom, man. Mm. <laughs> Please don't ever cast spells anywhere near you. Like no one casts spells anywhere near you. He's an assassin, but he's very poor at choosing his targets. <laughs> he always he always chooses the ones with the highest security detail. <laughs> this guy, this guy, sure, okay, okay. <laughs> Found him here in the bottom level of his dungeon, just wandering around. That's yeah. not the sign of wisdom. Last session, I tried to assassinate a rock. Uh, so yeah, so uh, uh, Darius is still. Uh, the same character he just changed his name so he's still kumus so he sort of had that central asian step sort of look to him um and we'll find out what david's uh vision for rin is next time we see him but for now he's in the npc cloud uh speaking of npc clouds we have for our retainers the usual uh in this delve we have yost y'all and yost. um yost y'all and who am i gonna say elizabeth of course elizabeth how yes. dare you john how Sorry. dare you everyone's favorite um okay uh, more business to attend to. Another great conversation we had on Discord was actually someone asked a really relevant question um, that I definitely felt that there was a need to actually add a rule for, which is in addition to our death door rule for massive damage that um, that ends up in being in um, in automatic death. Right, as the death doors rule stands right now, there is no way to actually die 
from a hit in combat, right? You you would only go unconscious, and then, then the only way that you could die would be to fail that death save. So I think I do think there needs to be a massive damage rule. And um, after a little bit of discussion on Discord, I'm going to go with um, negative ten being the just the the baseline basic right there. So if you take a total amount of damage in a round, not from a single hit, from a single round worth of damage that is uh, that brings you to negative ten or below, you are automatically dead. No save. Uh, nothing. It's just you're just straight up dead. Um, so that's what we're going to go with. Two things going forward. Um, Two things. One yes. that would have killed Mort in the in the in the bombing room. We figured it out. It like, would not have. What really? Yeah. yeah. It wasn't and pain. Two, it was very painful, but it wasn't fatal. And two, who's the, whose bright idea was this? Which commenter was that? <laughs> yeah, can we? Can I'm, we? I'm sort of feel like the, the most dangerous monster in this game are the commenters who keep taking away our wands. <laughs> That's true. Thank God for you commenters keeping us all in line. Oh my yeah. goodness. Well, it's it's good because this you know we haven't uh, this campaign hasn't been lethal enough. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it is true, though. Like, I could see like a, a dozen different scenarios off the top of my head where something that should have automatically killed you would, by the rules that we're using, it just would have knocked you unconscious. Like, you would have fall fallen from 100 like, feet. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, I'm getting pin cushioned by 50 kobolds. Right. Uh, Stop giving him ideas. There, let's see. Ba -ba -ba. Okay, the other thing I want to do, but uh, but I kind of forgot that David wasn't going to be with us tonight. Um, but I do want to clarify. I'll I'll do it with him next time as well. That um, his sword, Oculus, that that sentient sword. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you can't really. I know you guys had a plan to talk to the sword and all that kind of stuff, but we we need to be clear that the sword does not communicate via language. It communicates with its user via um, empathy only. So it gives like sense impressions and things like that. Uh, I just want to make that clear. And. Um, so the, that would be mostly pity, right? Yeah, right now. <laughs> um, the other thing is is that I mistakenly said that its detection abilities, it can detect evil and can detect um, invisible objects in a 10-foot radius, was just a passive power that's always on. It is not. It, 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 they, they can be used unlimited, but you, the sword must be in hand, wielded, um, and it must be activated consciously. So David would have to say, like, I'm using the detect, detect evil, right? It doesn't, which is be better for me because I don't have to like keep, you know, always be, kind of be aware of that. Um, and I think that's it. Okay, so it is the 2nd of Jelenios. It's about 12.20 in the afternoon. You guys are in the huge, long, rectangular hall of the labors with these 12 pillars with their accompanying frescoes on their facing walls with that depressed uh, circle in the middle. Uh, that's not the circle state of mind. That is its physical state. <laughs> um, and there is the body, a uh, corpse of a fresh knight of the Azure Shield, which is where you got that sentient sword from. And what Rin is also wearing the very um, uh, bespoke armor of. Uh, what else? The, the hall is lit with continual light, a sourceless amount of continual light, so you don't have to worry about that. You guys had uh, investigated the two stairways leading out of here, both to the east and the west, found corpses in both directions, and inscriptions above the archways leading into the Hall of Labors from the top of each of those steps as well. Um, the eastern one has a cave-in, which you have pinpointed thanks to both Matt and Ted's excellent mapping. That leads back towards the uh, the stalking area of Eustace the Pentarch. And the western one had some interesting doors, one that was uh, broken and open to the north, and one that was shut to the south, but you have not investigated either. Um, the eastern one uh, had, obviously, there there was the remains of a battle that had taken place between a high-ranking officer and his um, soldiers, and that officer had killed those soldiers with a... Uh, a short sword that was obviously magical. I can't remember who took that that gladius though. Uh, I picked it up, but I think I was. I, I think I picked it up, but I was. I was going to give it to um, uh, one of the new guys who could use it. Okay, so, so I do think, we want to uh, determine that as the first thing. Who's got the uh, gladius? Yeah, why don't we give that to uh, um, uh, Darius? Darius. The guys here, the guys yeah. here. Yeah, and, and the, the guy, other guy who doesn't have the magic two handed sword, multi yeah, yeah, yeah. sword. Yeah. All right, let's give um, you the cool, the cool, cool little you. guy. Right. But, you, um, but you're also wielding Clavum, right? You, but you, but in in 
key form? The problem is like in lockpick form and like putting like weaved into my hair or in a belt pouch or, you know, something like that. Okay. But I do have a problem now in that I have with a short bow, I have too many equipped items. Uh-oh. And if I take that, I'm going to end up dropping into 60 foot movement. And that's no bueno for a character with four hit points. So um, I think what I will do is John. Mm, shit. Does anyone want a short bow? Oh, feels you're bad. give up your missile weapon? I don't know. It I'm feels pretty bad, equipped. right? I'm over-equipped myself at this point. I, I would in the same situation if I took it. I you could tuck one. You could you could tuck the short bow or the short short sword away in your pack. It just means that you wouldn't be able to retrieve it in the same round that you wanted it. Right. But I think I would rather I'll put the short bow and the quiver, which is two slots. It's one of the reasons why missile weapons are so challenging in this game, man. Mm-hmm. Is um they take up a lot of space on your equipped items. So I'll put those in my I'll strap them to my backpack kind of thing, and then okay. I'll just put Actually, the short bow in my belt. Okay. Yost could carry those as equipped if the you... short bow. Yeah. Yeah, let's he's, do it. He's literally his only equipped item. Furry boots, yeah. furry loincloth, and a black iron spear. Like that's Unless the, the only boots thing. are magical and the cloak are magical, Ted. Those are unencumbering items. That was a story. joke. Oh, oh. <laughs> goblin! <I> mean, <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Okay, so who's wearing um, um uh, who's wearing Laryl's cloak? Me. You're wearing the cloak. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Is that the only other sort of like heavy duty item that we need to clarify for anyone? The plus well, I, two shield. Goran's plus two shield. Is where? And I think Mort was going to use that, right? Yep. You've adjusted your AC Mort's accordingly? Crazy. I have adjusted my AC accordingly. Okay, so you are actually holding it. You're actually wielding it. It's not strapped to your back. I am unwielding my regular, boring, old, mundane target special and putting in this <laughs> sexy new uh, sharper image version here. Okay, so the old shield, are you keeping it or dumping it? Um... Does anybody need a shield? Probably I have, not. I have a basic one. Yeah. I have a basic one. It, it's not bad if we have it, if we have the ability to carry it to take it, because sooner or later somebody's going to stop a crit. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, you know what? I could, I would still be, uh, yeah, every shows can carry an extra shield. He's got, he That's can right. still be it. Actually. So you can't carry so, two shields at all. Not even like one in your, in your pack. You can, I mean, you can you can hold one and have one on the back, but you can't have like two on the back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just one on the. Okay. He would just okay, have one on the back. Okay, he's fine. got he's got one on his uh, stumpy arm. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Okay. okay. So yeah, take a shield, and Mort will now have a plus two shield, which is pretty dang sweet. And so Yost is going to carry the the bow and arrows. Yeah. Okay. So he's still at ninety. Uh, Mort is still at 90. Okay, so everyone's still at 90. Their packs are getting close to full. I, we can't take much more. We're going to have to use the yeah. sack at some point. Yeah. Uh, all my yeah, all my guys are full up at 90. I mean, there, there's some like um, really common things that we could dump if we need to. But um, yeah, if we start getting really good stuff, we will have to start using the, the sack to carry. Yep. And don't forget, too, about the opening of the sack does prevent, like the shields can't go in there, for instance. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Okay, so let's get to adventuring, shall we? So you're in the Hall of Labors. Um, you have done very little actual deep investigation. We basically kind of gave like a very brief overview of what was being done, and we focused more on the corpse itself. Um, actually, all the corpses that you've been finding is sort of like the, the more detailed stuff, but you have yet to really thoroughly, if, if you want to, once again, investigate the architecture or features of um, any of these right. rooms. So uh, let me know what you'd like to do. And don't forget, too, that... Um, uh the the it's it's not dusty here right it's it's right. got detritus and stuff like that but there's it has seen traffic recently yes we determined that the cave in is like pretty serious right this is mm-hmm. not like a short term move some ricks out of the way thing this is a major yeah. cave in right as i said last time it's it's a matter of time it it, it you could right make a passageway um but uh right. it would take a lot of long time right okay and then so guys why don't we just start in this west uh, eastern room 
we've got three corpses and a guy. We've taken a gladius, but that's the only thing we've done in here, I think, right? He's taken the sword. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, well, before before we there there are a couple things that Av needs to do to be um all that he can be. Because one of right. in addition to losing his dear friend to that horrible turtle, um, he also lost his holy symbol. And that's kind of important. That rankles. Have. Yeah, you're gonna have to switch gods to set now because that's what we've got. No, 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 no. I've, I've, I've got this. I've got this. But there, there are two things that you guys can go ahead and do your, um, like uh, examinations and and stuff. But two um, things I want to do. Uh, the first one, John, is I still have um, a couple of turns. We kind of counted it out. A couple of turns left on those uh, snakes that he mm -hmm. summoned last time. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't do a lot against the turtle, but what I was thinking. Um, we did notice some uh, glinty things down at the bottom of that uh, big pond or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, for that last, you know, 20 minutes of their existence, Av wants to like, you know, command them to, um, you know, find all the shiny things that they can either eat or grab with their little snaky mouths or mm -hmm. snaky bodies. Mm -hmm. And, bring them up those stairs. Like I, I figured that the nose is kind of too hard for them to get up, but mm -hmm. um, they could bring them up that stairwell. And um, then after 20 minutes, whatever, you know, whatever they've been able to bring up, they would turn back to snakes. <coughs> but I figure whatever they ate would <coughs> still be on the be platform. There. Sure. Yeah. Okay. There's so, not enough room for you to like hang out in the nose and have them bring that like to the base of Arden's head or something. Is there, because um, I, I, I don't really know how that is shaped exactly. Like, I don't know if the snakes could get to some ledge or something that's there on the on the bust. There's no ledge on the bust, really. You just kind of right. yeah. okay. like it, it seemed okay. like the nose was kind of high up. It, yeah. it just seemed Perfect. like it would be easier for them to that way they could spend more time foraging and sure. less time climbing. OK, so uh, I'm going to say uh, you guys can other guys can do something within this turn, but a turn is definitely going to pass while the snakes yeah. do it. Yeah. Um, as the. Uh, after this, so the snakes crawl up out of the water and flotsam, um, and slither their. Oh no, they would have to go up the nose, right? Yeah, yeah. No, no, he's saying dive to the bottom, grab a golden, you know, spoon or whatever, whatever, you whatever and shiny, drop it yeah, on that platform that's to the west in the water cave, like going up the stairs. That okay, right, yeah. Because okay. I figured that would be easy for them to go up. Sure. Okay, so they, yeah. you don't know, but and, you have a sense that they're obeying your commands. Okay. Awesome. Okay, cool. And while while they're uh, doing that, the other thing I need to do is I have an idea for his new holy symbol because mm -hmm. it's kind of it's very much like tied into his friends. Right. So mm -hmm. he wants to uh, reach into the sack and pull out a pair of uh, snips left handed. Mm -hmm. And um, he's going to take uh, Goran's chain mail and he's going to like cut a little you know, snip a few of the, the rings. So he has like a little, can make like a little pouch mm -hmm. out of this chain mail. Mm -hmm. um, he wants to pull also out of the sack, just like a little pin. You know, like, you know, like you might use to hold a, a garment or something like a little pin. Mm -hmm. Reminds him of the dagger that Onwir like to stab people with. Okay. And then just a few grape leaves in honor of Lysion. So it's kind of, like the symbol of his friends and the symbol of his God. And he wants to wrap them up in this, um, you know, in this little piece of the uh, chain mail that he snipped out. Like a chain mail and, dice bag sort of thing. Yeah. 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 Okay. And then just, he's got some, uh, some wire uh, left over from back when he um, was going to go fishing in the, the, the yep. fire the elemental fire pit. pit. Right. Yep. And he's going to just like use that wire to just like, you know, sew it closed and a nice little empanada. Okay, cool. And so that, that'll definitely take a turn as well. Um, you could certainly, uh, right. you know, it, it's as holy as you sort of invest your faith into it sort of thing. But I would say for mm -hmm. it to have any actual like mechanical holy effects, um, you would have to cast bless upon it. Okay. Um, but you okay. can, but the, but your ability to turn undead though is not, <laughs> it does not require a holy symbol. It's just sort of normally what you would do. Um, okay. But, uh, well, I mean, if, if it does, I have holy symbols of, uh, other guys, I have Thoth, you know, like I have who's aligned and cool, right? But so, I mean, you don't worship him though, right? Nah. Yeah, so you can't, you can't you convert, 
Yeah. <laughs> it is not that dire. Uh, so, but so I'm looking are we gonna at. Sell these, hmm? Are we going to sell these little pouches in our gift shop, John, now that Matt's invented them? This is going to be like a it's Patreon. so disrespectful, page. man. That's like high quality dwarven mail. Yeah. And I'm going to carry a little bit of my friend with me the whole time. <clears throat> could just take what's left of him on the end of the rope and like take his finger bones little phalanges thing you know i'm not that kind of priest that's then you guys can raise me you could raise me when he gets a couple more levels well half of you anyway i'm not i'm not going to be alive when i have a couple more levels (laughs) okay so uh so so that's matt yeah a couple turns yeah that's one turn for matt so what are you guys doing um he's got two turns left on the snakes though right matt one yeah, but I mean, this. I don't, you know, they're just doing their thing. It's they're independent of us. Okay. okay. So if the only thing we've done in that Eastern room is take the Gladius off the officer, mm-hmm. uh, I think we should search the rest of the the bodies uh, more thoroughly mm-hmm. and just kind of investigate the room. I don't expect to find any secret doors or anything in here, but I bet there's some stuff on these bodies that might be interesting. Uh, okay. So Mort at least heads over to the Eastern room once again. And uh, to Morton check Yost. out Morton Yost. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll yeah. go with them. I'll go with them. So cave-ins on the north. Uh, the There's a corpse of an Archontian Deckarch that's slumped against the western right. wall. Uh, he had a short sword, which Mort is now wielding. I mean, sorry, uh, Darius is now wielding. Uh, yeah. And a shield. And his torso is filled, Boromir style, with crossbow bolts mm-hmm. and broken spear mm-hmm. shafts. Um, but there are three legionnaire <laughs> bodies um, that have been killed right. by uh, short sword thrusts that lie at his feet. Um, there is a, a satchel there with a leather book, uh, which a uh, leather satchel that had the book, The Twelve Labors of Arden, which was mm-hmm. a large deluxe folio version. Yeah, um, we're taking that. That is a slot, by the way, if you're going to be taking that book. And uh, over okay. the arch leading back down the stairs is an inscription um, that was in Mithric that Rin was able to read. Uh, At this point, uh, no one is able to read Mithric. Right. Um, Um, So last session, though, you did translate it, and it did say uh, fidelity was her guiding light. The walls here otherwise are completely bare of any ornamentation, no frescoes at all, compared to the Halls of Labor, which um, is completely decorated with with frescoes. Do, do we have a writing implement or? Yeah, Mort can write it down. Um, for later. Uh, for later on the map. Okay. Uh, conceivably. Uh, I'm not sure how we'll mechanically do that here with our actual map. But anyway, so if we, uh, can we look around this room a little bit, John? Like go through the bodies and... Um, Look for any other anomalies in the room. Um, sure. So we'll call that the same turn that um, uh, Everest yeah. was building his holy symbol and commanding the snakes. Um, and yeah. you can, uh, uh, with certainty, confirm that there are nothing else of interest here. And the only egress uh, besides the stairways is to remove those blocks. All right. So we will take that book for sure. If it's in a satchel, I might as well take the whole satchel and make it easier to carry. You have the slots to carry that, Ted? Mort has one more no more than one slot but yeah um mortal take the book okay got the book i got a question Mm -hmm. when david stripped the knight was there anything in his personal effects that might indicate who he is uh no unfortunately not okay no identifiers all right yeah so if we look for you said basically our search for secret doors around this room also turned up nothing weird or anything no yeah. Okay. Okay. So then the three of us, I guess will go back to the long room about the time that Matt's done making his little medicine bag. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mike. Yes. Mike. The pillars, the six, the 12 pillars that indicate like the different challenges for Arden Bull. Mm-hmm. Do any of them have any kind of like, burnt candles at the base of them or any anything that might look like an offering. Um, I will very closely examine one of the ones that would be related to like, say the owl bear or the dragon or whatever has claws. Right. And see if there's any like mechanism for triggering um, some sort of challenge. Sure. So 
I have to remind you not to touch the columns there. He's I'm not going to touch a damn thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And so, well, well, I just want to say while he's doing that, Mort wants to go over to the circle in the center and look to see if the, like that floor raises or lowers or if there's any movement there. Like while he's doing something, if something happens in this circle, he's watching that. Sure. And oh, is, it a gra- the- is it a graded slope inside that circle, John, or no. is it like abrupt? It's abrupt. Like it's abrupt. It's just mm-hmm. like it dropped down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or was mm-hmm. cut out like a cookie cutter kind of thing. And yeah. As, so as- Morton Yoster there. And uh, uh, Av and uh, his uh, team will uh, walk along the walls and look at the frescoes. As they okay, walk. cool. So in, in general, all three of you guys are sort of doing the same sort of thing. You're kind of checking out this room. So yeah. what you could basically surmise immediately is that um, the fresco paintings are all depicting the each, – each one depicts like a scene, a well-known scene from one of the 12 labors. And the fresco corresponds with the pillar – that is numbered the same as that is that labor that is depicted on the fresco. You understand? Um, mm-hmm. In addition, each pillar has a spiraling uh, sequence of sculptures that sort of tells the story um, as it progresses through of Arden actually achieving and completing each feat, each labor, right? Uh, so it's like multiple it, multiple scenes of Arden doing shit as it kind of goes around the pillar, right? And then at eye level, before that's that that sort of sequence starts, there is a um, a Roman numeral in Arcantian, an ancient Arcantian uh, numeral that corresponds to the actual labor. Uh, Darius, knowing that, or having picked up on the fact that the knight had died from being mauled by claws, um, everyone's first instinct would be to associate it with the first labor because that's the one that everyone knows the best, which was the Albers. And so you uh, immediately kind of see how things are ordered with the pillars. And it basically starts in the west, um, on the northern, the the northern row of pillars. Mm-hmm. It starts with number one and goes all the way across to the east, the northern row, before ending at the sixth labor. And then it goes all the way back to the west and starts with the seventh labor, on the southern row and goes all the way to the twelfth on the eastern side. You understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yep. Right. So you're going to go to the far northwestern pillar is where you're at, Darius, and you're taking a look. Yep. Um. There, they, the, um, yeah, so you see the, the, uh, the Archontean numeral one, like an I, basically, right, standing there. And the fresco that is on the northern wall facing that pillar <coughs> is Arden spearing an owlbear. Okay. All of the frescoes are done in a very sort of socio realist style, you know, sort of like that Mussolini. Italy, you know, 1920s sort of fascist sort of style, you know, not not in a necessarily bad way, but that kind of very kind of severe, you know, b- brutal sort of um, uh, uh, design. Same heroic. as the, yeah, very heroic, uh, you know, clean, sharp lines, cheekbones, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, the, yeah. the the sculpture in the grotto was of the same style, by the way. Okay, um, markedly different than the art styles that you saw in the precincts of Thoth. Okay, which is much more ancient Egyptian, right? Yeah. So, man. John, th- uh, this just sparked a memory. Back in the uh, the stairwell that went up to the Hall of Heroes, mm-hmm. where we saw the frescoes of the soldiers fighting the amphibians and frogs and things, mm-hmm. how does that style compare? Is that like this, or is that more of the Egyptian more, style? More of like the Egyptian, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, the pillar uh, shows this sequence of things happening, uh, uh, Darius. So it was Arden receiving a commission from the emperor, traveling through a village. She talks to goblin elders in that village who are dressed in, uh, the elders are dressed in the flamboyant uh, native goblin style that their elders usually wear. Um, Climbing a mountain, she enters a cave, and then she slays four owlbears with her spear. That's the sort of sequence of events that kind of spirals up around the pillar. Okay? So... That's sort of what you see. Can I specifically look at the Roman numeral I or mm-hmm. one mm-hmm. and see if it looks like any kind of button or depression? I'm not pushing anything. Thank you. But if it looks like it might be a movable thing. You want to be very careful and take a real good thorough look? Yep. As in, do you want to take a turn? Yeah. Me. Okay. You can, after very carefully looking, without touching, Darius, um, as you are a you're always wary of poison being a master assassin. Um, 
I'm not, I'm not a master of stats, but you'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> level you, one. Sure I will, John. Sure I will. <laughs> you, you reach that level where it's like, oh yeah, poison bad. Um, the uh, you can definitely determine though, Darius, that the um, that the numeral can be depressed. Yes. Can I run over to the next pillar and see if the same if the numeral on that pillar is the same mechanism? Yes. Okay. Okay. I will warn everybody not to fuck around with those. After Ooh, Darius the language on this new guy. As, as you guys are looking around, um, at, so at the same time that Darius is looking at that numeral Mort, looking down in the uh, depression, you don't see anything strange other than just the fact that the depression is there. It does not it is? You can definitely confirm that it was never used as like a fountain. There's no water right. mechanisms or anything like that, or um, any right. signs that any sort of liquid has ever been there at all. It's literally just part of the floor has um, has has you know um, with intention has been sunken, right? It didn't right. cave so in I'm not or anything. Like scratch marks or tracks or abrasion or something. Because I was not. envisioning maybe like activate the pillars and you know the pit forms and it fills with owl bears and your fighter sort of thing sure you know, that's like totally that. natural yeah but unfortunately yeah. you don't see any signs of that uh it looks right. like natural detritus has been kicked in here it's not like weirdly uh -huh. clean um but and uh it all it is also stained with the blood of the knight uh, but right. other than that there is no other significant features and that doesn't show any like like you know in uh the great escape where they spill the water and the the water goes under the stove and yeah. reveals the existence of the stove. The blood here yeah. cools no. normally. Doesn't no, and that's that's actually like a tried and true trick of of old school dungeoneering is the water, the water yeah. trick. You know, so keep that in yeah. your back pocket because that's an excellent. From my use experience, of, yeah. blood is too viscous. <laughs> <laughs> when have you ever seen blood, my friend? Really? <laughs> I don't know when he's been in a German prison camp. That's what I want to know. He calls himself an assassin, but has he killed anybody yet? <laughs> uh, come on. Um, All right. So, so we're, we're, I think we're. Oh, uh, sorry. Just going to say real quick, Avaricio, so you, um, I can, I can certainly, if you want any sort of details on what these frescoes depict or what the pillars depict, I can certainly tell you. But you can, I can just say briefly that during that turn that everyone else is doing something avaricious, you can definitely confirm that every fresco corresponds with the, with the, with the labor. There's, yeah. There's nothing kind of out of place. Nothing's out of place. Yeah, oh, I thought he was off luring the turtle to its do doom or something. Like that that. Last turn. <laughs> no. So, but at the end of that turn, after all that investigating um, is when the sticks with snakes spell um, is now gone, even though you can't really see the result of that, but they're, yeah, so, snakes are gone. And so I, I will tell them you know, there may be, um, you know, I had my guys try to bring up some treasure. I don't know if they got it or not, but it would be on the stairs if we loop around the way that this, we think this does. But really, I kind of just want to get out of here. It might be worth it, but we'll see if we find our way over there or not. Is Mort still uh, minus two strength? Uh, from from the, Eustace? From Eustace, yes. Okay. Oh, I didn't realize it was minus two. I thought you were minus one. That was that was Gorin. Gorin and look what happened him. to him. Uh, Gorin took a bath, yeah. though. Yes. Well, he I'm did. looking forward to uh, this steaming hot cup of goblin getting a good bath. At some you know, it's, it's just beyond those rocks. It's You're looking right out. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. <laughs> You're all, all right. So, guys, I want to go home. Let's go. Well, let's go west. I want to. Can we talk about this room for a minute, though? Like, we know that elsewhere in this complex, we've got what we think is sort of trials of the Archontians, like testing themselves against things. And um, this looks to be part of it. I, th I right? think this is the, the whole. I think this is the place where you take your test. Like you pick your test, you pick the one. Remember there was the book in the, the room of death where, you know, it listed all the statistics of everybody trying each one. I think this I think is the place right. where the trials happen. I think oh. that's right. What I would like to ask, though, too, John, is there right. anything that would indicate what caused the cave-in? Uh, I know I'm not a dwarf. I know I'm not a dwarf anymore, but like, is it? <laughs> yeah, uh, I would say that Goran may have had a, an inkling, but none of you do. Speak with Dad. Speak with Dad. Rub it, rub it in, John. Rub it yeah. in. Do we save any part of Goran, or what are we doing with him? Got is, eaten by a turtle. Him. He's at the bottom of the of the lake, of the grotto. Did he only get half eaten by a turtle? Yeah, but he well, got he's pulled. Remember, he, he got attacked half, 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 half of a person. Yeah. So, yeah. Did, did you see that one of the commenters sent me a picture, a gif of a turtle eating a strawberry? <laughs> yeah, that's great. 
Rin, Rin, Rin one, Rin v- version zero one point zero. Uh, his corpse is up on that western thing where yeah, we lo- we looked in there. Yeah, oh, we'll put him in a nice little you know restful position. I'm sure he's he'll be fine. So yeah. what do you do? David's had uh, a tough time with it on this level. Yeah. Okay, that that makes sense, Matt. That this is where yeah. that trial was. We just found the book far away from there. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, that makes sense. Okay. And remember, like this is this whole thing is like in order. It, uh, I would guess that you know the the uh, the petitioners or the you know the the people who are here for their trial, they're going to go in, take their bath, get their blessing from right. uh, Arden, and then come, come in here. probably through that east eastern west. and then go east to west, and so the yeah. west is going to be exit out. Right. So in that western room with the bodies. The door that's smashed and open is probably going to lead back up to that corridor with the stank monster in it, right? The stank monster. Be, the stank nope. monster, the smelly, the smelly thing that lived up there in that room. Do you remember yeah. the Flotsam Tunnel, Ted? Come on, come back to us. No, I wasn't here on that episode. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. So, so there's a yeah. stinky, there's a stinky humanoid there, or something that lives up here with bare feet. I and see. And I think that this, this. Northern tunnel is going to go there. That I'm wondering sense. if the southern door, knowing that the waiting pool or whatever um, at the bottom of the falls is somewhere over in this direction, right? Do you see my cursor? Yeah. Maybe you don't. Uh-huh. No, I don't see your cursor, but I tried to. Disabled, yeah. You disabled the cursor. Okay. I had I think to. You, you kept getting in my way. <laughs> <laughs> it was totally intentional. I'm sure of it. Like <laughs> so a I don't want to meet. I don't want to meet the stank monster. I I think it's that little halfling guy that got lost. I, still I think mean, because they were little feet. Remember, they were little bare feet. Not uh, Gollum had little feet too. I know he was adorable. Those big big eyes looking at you. Yeah, he did have those big eyes. Yeah, the ghosts of Dalton's darlings all judge you from their graves. Uh, okay, the mention, I, mention I, of harmless little feet. I I want to. <laughs> I, I do want to go south, but I think we should at least peek. I think we should peek to the north. All right. You going first. I'm not going up there. I mean, I'll go with you. Don't get me wrong. I'm not that guy. I'm just saying is I'm not going first like I used to. All right. All right. All right. All right. Why don't okay, we? Let's send our cleric first. Oh, geez. Perhaps Ghost <laughs> should... <laughs> should go first. Uh, uh, I think, you know, I think the guy with provision should go first. Why don't why, we could we could do this? We have Yost and I are still kind of married with our fancy rings. I could uh, I could go blind and let him be invisible. We st- we, we have uh, we idea. still have invisible right? Yeah, okay. yeah. So Yost is invisible. Light, so and him yeah. is a light. Uh, yeah. Okay. So are the, is this western room lit the same as the center room? No. Okay, so Elizabeth pulls out the lantern and lights it up. Yeah. Did we search the bodies? So, Mort, you still have a Actually, torch. No, that, we didn't. Mort, you are still carrying a torch that has one turn left on it. Do you care about it anymore? I was carrying a torch. Um, it's only got one turn left, and you are in a room that's lit. Right. So, well, we're going to the western room, so I'll have a torch, and it'll okay. burn out, and then Elizabeth will light the lantern while we're in here. Okay, Elizabeth's lighting a lantern. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't mind Elizabeth. carrying the lantern if Elizabeth wants to carry the Jackin's casket, you know? We got a okay. brand new Gladius. We need that. You're going to you're going to fight the smelly guy. Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it, he might be a humanoid. Huh? So, with this, this plan involves <clears throat> opening the door with an invisible guy standing in it and someone behind him lighting through the lighting door. Lighting the way. Okay. Somebody's going to have to like. <laughs> you sound very obvious. <laughs> well, the, the northern door is not shut. It's open. It yeah, is. we it's, just got to peek around. It's musket, I believe, right? Isn't it like yeah. cracked or. Yes. Uh, so it's. First things of... first, let's search the bodies in that room yeah. and make sure that yeah, they're not going to pop up and say absolutely. hi. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this is five dead legionnaires that died of what? Okay. So yeah, you you all go into that door there. Um, Walls are bare here. There's the inscription over the arch says she was immovable and steadfast is what you remember it saying. None of you can read that now. Uh, There are uh, five long dead Arcantians here um, showing signs that they slew each other with swords and spears. There appear to be amongst that 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 wreckage uh, about two usable gladii and two usable spears. Both normal. All normal. 
little pockets full of diamonds yeah. or no, unfortunately the, not. And the door the to the south is or anything? firmly shut. Okay. But you have not touched it or looked at it. Yeah. All right. Do we wanna, so, should we listen at that door before we yeah. go up? Yeah, we should. We should listen at that door. Spend a turn listening. At the end of that turn, Mort's torch goes out and Liz's lantern is lit. Well, while his torch is still burning, though, John, mm -hmm. can I hold it to the bottom of the door to see if there's any kind of breeze coming through? Uh, oh, mm -hmm. good, good question. Um, yeah, there is no breeze. No breeze. Bitch. From the south door you're talking, Mike? Yeah. Yeah, no no breeze. We're never um, getting out of here, boys. Never. And we listening at the door, this. you do not hear anything beyond. Is the door up here locked? Do you attempt to try? No, is there a lock on the door? <laughs> like, is there there's a, not. There's not like a hanging padlock, or or, or one keyhole? set into the door that you would pick. There right? is like yeah, there is a keyhole. There is a keyhole. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. Here's I'm a question I have for you guys. Let's let's say, like the the sections of this dungeon level that we've been through already, we we're pretty confident we've found a lot of the secrets and things for what we've already been through. We're not missing any uh, entrances or exits that would be of normal use. So the, 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 the use of this space with legionnaires and officers and a, what one assumes would be a regular series of rituals and trials and, you know, um, potentially like, you know, meetings and so on in the, in the halls, uh, various sorts. The, the order of operations here is a little weird in terms of like you would, you know, in a, in a, in a temple, for example, you enter at the front and the mysteries increase as you go deeper in. And with this one, it's like the mysteries seem to be right here. This is where the trial would be. Right. And you go deeper in, you get barracks. Yeah, yeah, we've been go going through this backwards. We've been going through it backwards, but so would everyone else, as far as I can tell. I don't think we can count that. I don't know if I agree with you, Ted. I, I okay. don't know if I agree. Say, say the entrance to this area is somewhere in the far eastern section, right? Um, whether you already, come in, we've already done the eastern section. No, I'm sorry, far western, western section. Yeah. Right? Oh, okay. So far, right. far west. Okay. Um, you would come in if you can't see my cursor. So... We yeah. You would come in and maybe like the first area you would really get to might be the shrine to Arden with the cleansing pool, which might be something that you would do in order to go forth into the thing. Right. Um, and then as you go further in, I mean, they usually talk like barracks and shit like that in the back corners of things. Right. Like, I mean, that kind of makes sense. And you have the big faux hall in the back with all the, what we think are the fake treasures and, and like the big statue room with all the statues of the worthies. And I don't know. I don't know if I agree with you. I think, I think the entrance is going to be somewhere in the Western section of this whole thing. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, I think it's, it's be. obviously has to be that we only have Western sections to go. I'm just concerned that um, basically I'm, I'm worried that because of, the the structure that we've seen thus far i'm being pessimistic we're way further from getting out than i thought because like i feel like we're at the the back end of the procession of mysteries and we've got to go through the front end still yes but remember this that my character and david's last character which like whatever we're horsing around in the pool at the bottom of the of the waterfall and got sucked into the turtle room so right. the western section somewhere to the west right over here we know gonna the be is going from the west to the east somewhere over here to the west is the splashy pool and right right I feel like the tunnel is going to be hidden behind the waterfall I think that the entrance will be somewhere behind the waterfall. Okay. So okay. the secret is to find our way west. It's either going to be north and west or south and west. Well, in that case, Let's since we up. know from looking through the iris opening in the hangar room, right, there was a larger iris on the far wall, which yeah. we can plausibly assume to be an exit. 
then we should try that southern door for preference because it is more likely to lead towards the cliff face. That's why I was in- curious about that. I, I want to go there too. I don't like the idea of an open door where things can sneak up behind us though. Okay. I just right. I, I just want to peek up there just to see what's up. We'll probably get us killed. I'm sorry if I do, but right. just like peeking up because there's a, an open door between us and that thing now. You just want to look through the door? Yeah. Well, okay. So, yeah, so look, are, Avaricious looking through the door? No, Yost goes invisible. Avaricious is blind. And Yost will. Is there enough space in that uh, opening of that door that he could like just yes. poke his head through definitely, invisibly? Definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So he's just going to stick his head through. Okay. And hopefully there's enough ambient light coming from behind him that he will actually be able to see something. Okay, so we'll say like Elizabeth is standing right behind him, having the lantern over his head. No one can see Yost. Okay. Yost, peers, Yost peers down there. Immediately after poking his head through, I need your roll for initiative. I'm just kidding. There's, there's, <laughs> <laughs> there is a, uh, immediately after poking his head through, right beyond the door, um, there is a 10 foot wide passageway that goes north, but it is, a, it is at the top of a stairs. So there are stairs that go down for Mm -hmm. 30 feet um and at the 30 foot mark it actually turns a corner to the east okay so the stairs start at the door yep and they go down for 30 feet and right at the base of the stairs it turns to the right to the this is exactly the mirror of this staircase right here which is why i think it's going to go up to smelly barefoot guys like hobbit hole all right so uh so the stairs are 30 feet and right. Well, the stairs are okay. So the stairs are technically twenty, and then at the base of those stairs, it turns right. Right. So at the thirty foot mark, okay. it turns right. Yeah. Okay. Oh man, it's messing with me here. Let's try to do. Since you're the only one with sort of hands on this map, um, you should also definitely let me know if you start to experience any lag because that's a danger sign for our continuing use of Miro. Does it turn? No, it turns east, though. I think not west. Yeah, east. Sorry, Ted. Oh, you did say east. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Uh, so, John, I'm not having any lag. What I'm having is um, some knock-on effect from something about how this particular map was set up. Hmm. It keeps causing me to. Uh, everything, um, everything looks good. Like jumps to the edge of the picture, right? Yeah, so for the twenty, so for the twenty feet the beyond the door to the north, there's a, there's a stairway. You can put a stairway symbol down there. 20 feet it goes down right goes down yep and that's just uh you know uh elizabeth's lantern just happens to illuminate that corner turn there it doesn't appear dusty appears to have been traveled um yos can kind of whisper back to he's like i think i see i think i see those little footprints it's a small child or something or maybe a little woman or halfling let's get her Okay. Or something else. Um, let's go peek, guys. Right. Let's go peek. Maybe so, it's that girl from the ring. While he's standing there. So while he's got it there, he wants to sort of put his hands on the door. He can get his hand around the edge of it, you know, and kind of feel. Is it going to make a big racket if he opens it, or can he open it quietly? Yeah, it kind of will, because it's like hanging crazily on its hinges. You know what I mean? He can uh, he can he can he can push it aside without any problem, but it's definitely gonna cause Yeah, it yeah, yeah. Avaricius, do you have a little one oil can, you know, like from Dorothy? Uh, uh, I don't, but uh, Elizabeth has plenty of oil. She's got three flasks of oil, so you can oh, just like, steal a little bit from her. You got a freaking sack, man. Just plot an oil can. It's you with a sack. Uh, like, we've uh, got, I mean, you know, I, I've learned you don't take advantage. You use the things that you have. You right, pull right, the things well, out that you need. <laughs> oil, the, oil the hinges so I can open it quietly, please. Uh, okay, Liz- Elizabeth uh, does that. She like takes the lid off, gets a little bit of oil on her fingers, and like. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then he'll try and, you know, like lift it a little bit so the hinges aren't stressed, right? You know, and then like sure, open uh, it as quietly as he can. Yost is actually like a, a gentle giant. He's like one of those kind of guys that. Yeah. Underst- understands how much muscle mass he, you know, like a lot of guys are like bulls in China shops, right? He's he's not like that. So no. uh, I need you to roll me a D six and on a one, he screws up and makes sound, but it's a very small chance. That seems pretty reasonable. All right, everybody, I'm going to roll a D six. Wait, why is this not? Oh, there we go. Okay. 
Woohoo! The opposite nice. of one. Yep. Okay, so he care he very carefully. He's like, oh, I got to do it. Okay. All right. So then uh, he'll beckon uh, Elizabeth to come down with the light, and he will invisibly go down to the bottom of the stairs and poke his head around. Okay. So with, you know, like, no, if there's any potential enemies, they can't see Yost at all, but do be aware, like, the light is giving everything away, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But okay. the point is to, like, poke your head around the corner and not get a face full of crossbow. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So Elizabeth and Yost make their way down, doing what henchmen do, which is taking the danger. And... Um, mm -hmm. Uh, as Yost gets to the bottom and Elizabeth shines her light over him, the you see that there is a unadorned, well-made, well-trodden Arkantian corridor that heads directly east, um, and it goes for the length of the torchlight, so for another 30 feet, and does not end. All right, guys. I think... Uh, you can also sense... Go. Yost also reports back. Actually, you guys would see Elizabeth sort of wrinkle her nose a little bit, and then Yost whispers back. He's like, "It, it doesn't smell good down here." Okay, it's getting worse. <laughs> so, does this satisfy your paranoia, Matt? Sure. Can we go to the south door? It smells <clears> like <throat> someone pooped. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you thought a Stephen hot cup of goblin was bad. <laughs> I thought that might be me because I'm a little bit scared, but. No, it's someone else. Now, I feel like we gotta go. Now, I feel like we gotta go. I feel it's, like we gotta go check it out. You want to? You think? Well, I, see, I think we want to check it out. I want to know what's behind us. Yeah, if I, think we're going we, south. I think we gotta check it out. Yeah, and that, we yeah check I want to. That's what I'm saying. We gotta go to the south. Does, door, anyone, have any now, doses, go. does anyone have any doses of mortality left? Nope. We use that all up, uh, dude. We all have plenty of mortality. That is the problem. <laughs> <laughs> In spades. <You're> stable. <laughs> I got okay, the so butt. So wait, Mike, you want to you want to go east or you want to go south? I want to check out the smelly hobbit hole. Let's no, we got to check out the south door. I, I am going to say the investigation here. so far has taken a turn. Yeah, don't mind me. Ed, let's just go deal with the smelly hobbit and then move on. This is how people die. <laughs> oh, let's you go, always let's go you, the bottom of the lake, guys. <laughs> I can't see anything. This is uh, you always want to check your six. That's uh, I don't know what that means. But. What's, right. what's behind this iris, guys? Come on. Yeah, you should. All right. I, I mean, if you're, you should take a moment. And think. Are are you? Or do you want to explore this area because you like the thought of completing a map, <laughs> or is it, or, <laughs> or, or do you actually want to? Uh, you do actually think this is an egress. Well, I don't know if it's an egress, but I, I don't know I'm very curious that. about whatever refugee is living down here and what they can tell us. Right? Not not everything is an enemy. You're right. It might be. Um, well, let me ask you this, John. With the mapping that we've done and the up up and the down, mm -hmm. do we feel like we're back on that main level? Because we went down to the pool. We went back up through Arden. Does the math kind of work out, or is that you, too hard to... You No, you... Well... I mean, I'm going to meta it for you, you know what I mean? Because you have a map as well. But uh, you feel that you are on the same plane as the bath. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fine. Let's go east. C continue east. Okay. Uh, so who is going? Is it, right, is it just on, Yosef Lisbon? We're agreed. We're going east? Yes. Let's yes. go east. Who is okay, going fine. east, though? Is it just um, the So Yost is there uh, at the bottom of the stairs with Lisbeth. Yeah. So I guess Mort's going to come up behind her with his shield up. Okay. And we all have to be with him, right? Why don't Why don't you go in front of Elizabeth with your shield? How many hit yeah, points okay. does Mort have, though? One. Oh, yeah. uh, no, why don't we put? Let's put Nyal up there. Okay, great. Let's put Nyal behind uh, uh, Yost. Yost, then Elizabeth with the lantern. I got it. I, I have I don't to think uh, Yost like needs hold to be somebody's. Invisible. At this point, Matt, you can you can see again. Don't make no Yost invisible at this point. We've we've come There's around no the point, corner man, because the light will be visible and we're all marching yeah. down the hall, hallway. Okay, I can see. Okay, so who's in front? What, was the, what was the thing where if you gave him bonus armor class, you are what? We haven't used I, that one. I take it. We've used it once. I take a hit to my AC and he gets a bump to his. He gets shield. He's like he gets AC fifteen versus melee. Do I do that? Uh, sure. Cool. Sure. Okay. I'm kind of in the back anyway, so why not? Yeah. All right. So we got Yost, Nial, Lisbeth, Mort, everybody else. Me. 
me and then Avarice, yes. Okay, okay, got it. All right, Hench is up first. Uh, down the corridor you go. All right, with Elizabeth's Lantern, you can see that this corridor extends from the point which you stopped drawing, Ted. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. It goes for another 20 feet before it hits a T intersection where there are 10 foot corridors going both north and south. The northern corridor um, is on the same plane. However, the southern corridor uh, descends a set of steps into the darkness. Ooh, okay. Uh, turning the corner to kind of peer your lantern down that southern area, you can see that the stairway continues for at least 30 feet before um, the darkness descends past the light. Is the smell stronger from the staircase or from it's, above? Uh, it's actually, that's a good question. The smell has been getting stronger as you've been traversing down the eastern corridor. Then when you get to the T intersection, you can definitely tell that the smell is stronger coming from the north. All you right. can also so hear, like you can hear from the southern corridor down the stairs you can hear the faint lapping of water huh. oh that makes sense there's going to be another that? under another staircase that goes under the water there just like this other one that we came down interesting yep, yep. that might be a, worth following up egress but okay so we got to go north so yost We'll look around the corner to the north. This is actually a good point for a mid-session break while you guys determine okay. which which way you'd like to go. So let's uh, let's go pee okay. and re-up on beer, and we'll be back in a second. Okay, we're back. Bladder's empty. Beer's full. Here we go. We're going Ooh. north or south. We're we're gonna look uh, around uh, the north corner. Yeah, we got it. We look around the north. Now, corner. now it's map completing. <laughs> okay, so you. Uh, it, it, it smells bad up there. That's that's the direction where the where the smell is bad. Okay. Yep. yep. You can be very quiet and just mm -hmm. looking and listening carefully. You can mm -hmm. hear the slight sounds of scuffling movement coming from the far distance. Okay. It's like you can't quite determine. It's you know it's coming from that direction generally, but it's just sort of like a you know just a slight sound of of feet moving slowly or body a body moving. You know, like scraping against stone, sort of thing. Like, Sean, oh, go ahead. Like coming from that corridor that's east west to the north. Uh, uh, it's coming from the north, but directionless, we other than that. And it doesn't seem to be approaching, it seems to be stationary. But you just right. kind of hear like that I'm, sound. Okay. And it's at irregular well, intervals. It is not a constant pattern or anything like that. Sorry, Ted, go right. ahead. Right. Well, what I'm thinking is like if, if, if sound is in a hallway, coming towards you it'll sound different than if it's like bouncing around the corner kind of thing is what i'm guessing mm -hmm. um like do i get a sense does yost get a sense that this is a thing just beyond his light or that it's coming from around the corner kind of around the corner yeah okay so can you see this hallway connect with another hallway uh he does yeah so it's exactly what you think it goes until it turns a uh, to the east and this corridor does not at all go to the west. It's a, it, does not. it completes this. Yeah, completes this corner. Mm -hmm. Okay. So essentially, the guess here is that door that we saw that was open is a room full of smelly, which you did you did conclude from the when you were coming from the eastern direction. Yeah. And look at and the, the symmetry of this now. Yeah. Right. And and the kind of smelly, right? The kind of smelly that we're getting is. Um, it's not m monstrous per se. This is like what a, a, you know, a person without access to a bath or plumbing living down here for a long time would have. Yeah, yes. Like getting yeah. on a smelly subway car. Yeah. It's like getting yeah, on that great. subway car that yeah. one dude's been sleeping on for a while. There, there, that, yeah. That's what it's like. Yes, exactly like that. Yeah. There is definitely, there's, there is no like wet fur. <laughs> Any of that baboon smell is not present. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm thinking, guys? Since the light is going to announce us anyway, why don't we call out and just see if he's friendly? Because if we otherwise we're going to turn the corner, he's if there's a guy there, he's going to shoot stuff or something. We could just call out and say hi, because he's gonna know we're here anyway as soon as we like peek around. Right. I mean, it's not like there's no access to a bath. Well, it's I'm, like Do you want to go swimming with the turtle? Good, good no, call. there's literally a bath that you took a bath in. Oh no, I guess that the was hot tub. 
yeah. hot tub. <laughs> Um, yeah, because you know, because we would like to get to that hot tub for you anyway, Mort. It might make you feel a little better. I would. John, like is there any tub. light coming from that doorway? No. Nothing lives in the dark, man. And that's like a normal thing. Matt, the goblin just looks at you like, "Come on, I'm right here." <laughs> <laughs> yes, you could live in the dark, but you probably wouldn't unless you had no choice, right? Have you seen goblin women? It's best in the dark. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, uh, but I like your idea, Matt. I right? think uh, uh, he's going to know we're here anyway. Let's, yeah. let's just call out. Hello. Um, Average is going to call out. Um, hello. Is someone over there? Uh, we're nice guys. We're not going to hurt you. Um, the, the sound immediately ceases. Immediately ceases. And you hear a sharp intake, like a hissing intake of breath, like a. St- yeah, no, we can hear you breathing and we hear you scuffling. It's fine. It's okay. We're stuck down here too. We're trying to get out. Do you need some help? You hear something get knocked over. Like you hear like a crash of some sort of furniture or something like that and a scattering of feet and then quiet again. Uh, feet like Should multiple or like, yeah, do, okay. single, single, Does it sound? single. Okay. Yeah, let's move on. Well, we and... know, Matt, it just went through a rabbit hole and we're never going to find it. So let's go <laughs> into the room now. Yeah, let's go check it out. Let's just move up to here and see what's going on. Yeah, we're gonna peek around the corner. Okay, so you peek around the corner and you see what you expect to see, right? So it smells really bad. You can you can definitely tell the odors coming from that door. The same way that that you you determine when you came from the eastern side. All right, the door is hanging open. All right, all right. Um, Why don't we move up to here and shine some light, kind of into that space a little bit, but not stand right in front of the doorway. Yeah, are you going to are you going to shoot us or something if we peek around? Because really, um, we're not necessarily going to shoot you unless you want to start some trouble, huh? So you I'll say that before you shine the light, and you hear a uh-huh. a high pitched, uh, definitely female voice say, "Go away, go away." Well, th- this is our plan. Um, <laughs> um, are you o- are you okay in there? Do you need some help? I don't. I don't need you. Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. Oh, no. We're, ve- we're very nice. Don't okay, be the no. light. Don't be the light. Does the light hurt you? It hurts. It hurts. All right. That's a little weird. So little having weird. and then having Elizabeth's like arm like extended to just kind of have the lantern sort of show in there. You can see um, uh, once again, you're kind of getting a bead from like a very sharp angle. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, huh? But uh, it appears to open up into a 10-foot long corridor before opening up into a larger space, uh, which you can't determine because of the angle you're at. Um, but it looks like the walls, at least on this 10-foot corridor, are, have frescoes on them. But the frescoes, which depicted at one time upper-class Archontians dressed in traditional tunics, like sort of like Roman senators sort of thing, um, have been defaced. Uh, it looks like the heads of all of every time there's a head depicted on the fresco, it looks like it's been scratched out. And huh. it looks like the walls, at least what you can see, have been smeared with undescribable filth. Uh, and are, co- and are covered are covered with scribbled names. What are the names? Can't tell. It's undescribable. You're not um. you're you're just not close enough to investigate. Yeah. Um, 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 Mort, do you want to peek, do you want to peek around yeah, with your, with your yeah. dark right. intravision? So if you guys back up a little bit, Mort will go up into the door shield, like seriously cowering behind his shield, you know, just poking his eyes around a little bit. You know, you know what, will. actually let, let Njal, Njal will be in front and you can kind of peek around behind. Say something goblin. That's what I'm going to try. Um, I, I, G- Mort wants to ask in Goblin, uh, are, are you one of my people? Uh, she, th- th- she, whoever it is, doesn't respond. You just hear like, a, like, like you hear like panting breath in the dark. Do you, do you turn, do you, are you coming around the corner and looking in with your improvision though? Yeah. Yeah. But, okay. but, but let the, let me all be in front. Okay. So Neal can't see anything, but 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 yeah. Mort's like looking under his arm, you know. Yeah, he's just there to there to kind of protect you. Okay. Yeah. 
So more once again, you're just using Infravision. Um, you're not getting too much yeah. more from uh, Elizabeth Lantern, but you do see definitely a single form that is radiating in heat. Yeah, small, crouched. Uh, it appears to be in the middle of the room, and uh, she is uh, whoever it is. It's definitely female. She's on top of a table, and she's crouched over like Gollum style, like like you know, like with her knees up to her chin, and she's like hugging her hugging her knees. And Pretty small, uh, she uh, small, but you can't really tell because she's like completely balled up, right? Right, right. Long, lank hair, actually like the ring girl style, like where you can't see her face, right? Like it's like her, like the the the, the hair is like all down her face. It's like super lank, and she's wearing like a like a a, a really ratty tunic that's basically like just like a like a sack that's over her her uh, right. her body. Um, but uh, once again, you can't get any real details because of the yeah. um the infravision however when you kind of step in and look the it, like it, the 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 stench is so powerful it almost repels you physically out of the room you know what i mean it's like it's, it's like everywhere um but unfortunately you can't really determine much because of the infravision can i see anything about the shape of the room are there other exits anything like that that's true we could map it uh yeah so it goes down for 10 feet and then it widens into a 30 foot by 30 foot square room and you're coming in from the middle of the northern wall. However, the uh, uh, the northeast and northwest sections are 45 degree angles rather than a square room. Like this? You got it. Exactly, Ted. Nicely done. Okay. And then can I see it's 30 feet deep, you said? It's 30 feet deep total, and there appears to be no egresses out of here. Except for the one that you came through. Um, but but you're getting a, a he's getting a heat signature, so it's probably not an undead kind of vibe. That's right? correct. Yep. So it's definitely a living person, um, and the, it's, uh, she is crouched on top of this table, and you know you can't really tell, but she but her head is towards you. She looks like she's looking through her hair at you. And she's like shivering and shaking, you know, and she's just like, all right. So Mort's going to go away. Mort's going to uh, be real gentle with his voice and just be like, okay, we're not going to hurt you. We don't want to come in. This is your home. I see that. Can you tell us, do you live here all the time? Are you trapped? Yes. For, for a long time now, countless countless nights it's always night here always night except for except for the hall except for the hall yes yes we saw that we saw that are were you an adventurer adventurer i don't why are you here i don't i don't know i've i've been here for so long i can't remember anymore i think have you seen yes, anyone else i was i was called i was called this this and she points to something on the wall that was has been written in feces um or, or was it or was it this i think yes i think i i think i call myself this now yes lighter lighter that's my name now it wasn't my name before but it is now lighter 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 i'm i'm so glad to meet you lighter you, you want to kill me no you want to take no, me, if I kill take you, me and you eat me talk to me oh i definitely don't want to eat you no no can i can i eat you i'm so hungry no so no. hungry are you are hungry would oh. you like a fish Yes. Yes. Uh, Avarice just passes passes forward a, a Pass fish. He's still kind of wriggling a little bit. He's going to huck it to her. He doesn't want to get close. Just go throw her a fish. Okay. So you think it's going to be like one of those golem things where she's like secretly super dexterous. You can snag it out of the air. No, it's like it flops on the <laughs> ground. And, and she she like kind of jumps back a little bit and sort of like a scared dog. You know what I mean? She sort of looks at it, looks at you, you know, looks down. And then she like snatches it up and like, but very much like a golem. She just tears into like the raw fish. You know? Okay. Is that, is that good? Did you like so, that? So good. So good. Can, can you tell me some more things? Are you, are you alone? Is there anyone else you've seen? I don't tell stories. I don't tell stories. I just live. Oh. I just live here. I, I try to find food when I can, but the demon, the demon thing to the South in the waters, I can't oh, go the far. turtle? I can't go far. I can't go the far. I can't turtle? go into the water anymore. I can't no. fish. Like, 
Every once in a while I can find something, but only when it sleeps. It sleeps to the east. And to the north, to the north, bodies, bodies, so many corpses, the dead. Yep, yep, yep. We uh, lost a couple of our friends in there to that thing. Boy, I wish we'd run into you sooner. <laughs> Where do you, wait, you've, you've come, you come from the corpses to the north. Yeah. There's no food to the north. Why would you come from the north? Uh, we're very bad adventurers. We get very <laughs> lost, very confused. Yeah. Um, you smell so good. Yep. You're well, smooth. that's <laughs> that's the fish. That's the fish. You're, you're she she there. like slithers off the table, like she just kind of slides off the table. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, like on all fours, and she slowly sort of creaks back, and you can hear like joints popping a little bit. You know, um, as she sort of straightens up, but she's definitely got like a hunch, and she very yeah. carefully like parts her hair and like pulls it back, and you can wow. see this very like just filthy face, right. eyes that have widened. Um, and retracted because of uh, being in the dark for so long. Uh, not like full on Gollum, but like definitely like widened to accommodate right. on, uh, on her way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, uh, just looks filthy, you know, just, uh, but it, it's framing the, the lank hair is framing a face that at one time probably was quite beautiful, young, um, but uh, the ravages of what she's experienced has completely, you could, even with Infravision, I guess with Elizabeth's light, as she sort of starts to approach you more, you could probably yeah. see as she starts to slowly enter the light just a little bit, but seems to kind of hesitate right at the edge of it. Um, right. That um, uh, that she's uh, insane, like completely insane. Yeah, like yeah. There's no there's no and, sign um, of like lucid thought in the in the eyes. Couple, couple questions here, like now that she's standing, halfling size, human, young uh, human. She's she's human size, but human? crouched over. Okay. You know, and uh, yeah. you could Vampire you could tell she's fang? human. She's she's human. She's straight up human, but yeah. She's not sporting like a pair of fangs or something, right? Like nope. claws. No, nope. but her skin is very okay. pale. You can see her veins right. caked with filth. Uh, once again, I'm only going with what has been shown at the edge of Elizabeth's light. You have not yeah. seen the rest of the room. Right, 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 right. Um, if so she gets I recently learned in a trip to Jewel Cave in South Dakota that if you spend like a long time in complete black, you will go completely dark, you know, blind. Really? So is she is she reacting to the light? Does she she is right? She is. She's she's trying to stay away from it. She's her she's curious, right? More has calmed her down a little bit, so she's approaching a little right. bit, but she right. definitely does not want to enter. <laughs> excuse me, into uh, the full light. Right. Why right. don't Why don't you kind of uh, uh, light? Why don't you just uh, avert your put? You know, shade your eyes a little bit. We're going to bring the light in. We don't want to hurt you, but you know, block your eyes so that we can just take a look, see, and see what's going on here. Okay. You, you might be You might be tricksy, though. If I can't see, you might You might do something awful to me. You might eat me. Oh, we just gave you food. Why would we do that? I guarantee you, we don't want to eat you. You're not our type of food. We you, eat different kinds of food. You come in here. You come in here to the safety, to where it's dark and warm. Well, we need light. We could come in, but we have to bring light. She, she like hisses a little bit. She backs up a little, and she kind of backs towards her table, and then kind of hides underneath it, grabbing like the two legs underneath, right? So she's kind of peering uh, at you from it between the table yeah. now, and she's uh, like, oh, oh, she goes, "Okay, you come through now." Okay, we'll be very nice. And we won't touch anything you don't want us to touch, okay? Okay. So you come in. So, yeah. Um, she uh, from somewhere behind her, she pulls out like a long shred of of cloth or something like that, and yeah. whips it on top of the table, and so it drapes over the front, and then she can kind of peer out through oh, yeah. like the curtains she that she's fort. made. So okay. she's got like a little fort. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So now, what do we uh, see in here besides feces on the wall? Right. So when you walk in, there's there is there's feces on the wall. It appears um, the stuff that's been written on the wall appears to have been written in feces. In addition, all of the um, you can see that the walls are completely coated. Right. The rest of the quarters have not been, except for the except for the Hall of Labors itself. But here, um, the, it, the there are frescoes everywhere of Arcantian nobles. They are there's no indication of of Arden or anything like that. But there are like ancient Arcantian high-ranking people, upper class, all of their heads have been defaced and scratched out and smeared with filth. 
and then there are scribbled names that repeat in Jack Torrance style um, all uh, on the walls. It either says Lyta, L-Y-T-T-A, and it's, I mean, very crudely, right? In all sorts of different variations, but it looks to be the same hand, obviously. Or Visania, V-E-S-A-N-I-A. V-E-S-A-N-I-A. Yeah. That name sounds familiar. Have we heard that before? Visania? Yeah, no. Wait, that's okay. that's definitely not the name of the ghost's girlfriend from no. episode one, right? No, no. I know you're okay, cute into that, but it. yeah. <laughs> We're going to um, find her. All right. Lita and Visania. Visania, was that your old name, Lita? Yes, that's... I, th I think that was the name I had when I came in here. I can't remember. I can't remember now. I remember was, why I was you with, came I was here? with other. I was with other people, but they died. They died so horribly. I can't. I can't remember. Well, but they left happens. me. They left me all alone. I, I know how that feels. And I could that not go. I could not leave. For the door is locked, and I can't. I can't go into the pool because of the turtle. I can't go north because of the dead. I live here now. Like, she starts to, would she starts you, to cry. Would you like? Would you like to leave if we can find you a way out? Would yes, you like to come with yes. us? Yes. So much food, so much food up above. You know, uh, there's a lot of light outside. I could, I could get used to it if there's food. <laughs> you, you can see. <laughs> so no, you can I see like too. That. Um, at this point, too, with the light shining on her, you can tell. Uh, first of all, she's wearing uh, basically like a sack. Right, that sack is cinched, however, around her waist which does reveal her feminine form. The, um, there is a large, it's actually kind of odd, a very large girdle instead of like just like, like a string or a belt or something like that, like a wide girdle that basically like basically pushes up underneath her breasts and goes all the way right. down to like beyond her <laughs> like a wide like WWE belt, right? Yeah. It is carved uh, or it's uh, etched, I should say, um, with extremely intricate angular runes. And both, I would say, everyone except Darius and actually the new guys, everyone except Darius and Rin, who's not there, uh, would immediately be able to recognize it as a very high end version of the scrawls that you have seen Gorin make every once in a while whenever he's taking notes to himself. Um, you mean tell me. <laughs> <laughs> that two sessions. No, no, one session after I die, there is a dwarven magical item in this fucking dungeon. Is that what you're telling me right now, John? <laughs> it might be. It might be. <laughs> Only one way to confirm. Um, in addition, <laughs> in addition, <laughs> uh, let's see. She has a couple of interesting things on her. So around a just a string, like a like a very simple string of uh, twine that she has formed into a necklace. There are two interesting items that are depending from that necklace. One is a large curved fang and one is a very large feather. Is it a white feather? Uh, it is a, like uh, a modeled, feather? modeled brown and white feather. In addition, Not on one of her, on one of her hands, her filthy, filthy hands is actually a beautiful looking ring. And that ring, strangely enough, whenever you focus, as you're kind of sizing her up through, you know, when she's sitting under the table, she's got she's sort of like wringing your hand so you can kind of see the ring on her finger. Um, strangely enough, you're like, oh, that's a nice ring. And you're like, wait a second. I've seen that fucking ring before recently. And you realize that uh, what you're looking at, if it's not the same one, is an exact duplicate of the ring that Gorin so fatefully took out of Vool's seat up north. So it is a heavy gold band with an oval inset, and inside that inset is a uh, intaglioed amethyst. And I don't believe that we actually got the full details on that because all shit broke loose, and you oh, once yes. again you uh, once again cannot get the full details here because you're not close enough. But uh -huh. um, but the, the the purple glint off the torch uh, off the lantern light uh, of the amethyst kind of gives it away. All right. So I assume, guys, that we're going to go meta here for a second. We're not on board with killing this poor woman just to take all of her stuff, right? That's not cool. 
No, 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 no. And let's okay. just bring her Darius along. Like, oh <laughs> Something else will kill her for us, and then we can so, never stop. <laughs> I got an idea, which is so so. Uh, Lita, we we could maybe take you out of here. Do you? But you know, we got to make a fair deal, right? So it, we gotta we gotta make a pact. You want to trade something? Tit for tat, tit for tat. Right, right. So you you want to trade something, and we could help you get out. What what do you want? Do you want do you want this? And she she points to her belt. Do you want this? Do you want this? Do you want well? Do you I want think... delicious food. I can fish. If you take me out, no, no food, no food. We're gonna get you food. That's part of our deal. So we'll get you out and get you some food. Hair? Do you want my hair? Not, not the hair. Oh, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I think you should keep the hair. You might it's need it to hide behind. Right? So she kind of grabs it now and kind of like tugs the whole thing uh, around her shoulder, and sort of like starts to stroke it. And it's just, yeah. you know, it's just a fucking mess. It's just awful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got to keep the hair. But she's like hair. stroking That's it gently. Fun. She's. Is there anything yeah. else in the room, John, that might be like a treasure trove or anything like that? Like if no. I, while they're talking to her, I want to be like, kind of like walking the perimeter and just kind of looking around. Sure. Yeah. So there's a, a large, a large wooden table, basically a square table dominates the center of the room. That's what she was standing on. That's what she's underneath right now. Um, there doesn't appear to be any chairs in sight, which is interesting, but there are piles of broken equipment. Um, and uh, disturbingly enough, there are the skeletonized corpses of, numerous animals and humans in the room and there are mounds mm -hmm. of excrement and litter that uh, along the sides and in the rear of the chamber right i bet you if you go poking through all the shit guys we'll find some like solid eye or something but i don't know if it's worth it <laughs> worth carrying <laughs> Also, you know, you know, like while you guys are discussing like the fact that it's probably bad to kill her, you know, she's been full on cannibal for probably like decades at this point, right? Oh, I'm sure she has. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, you, you have to make do. Okay. Um, so can we oh. try and get from her, John, which way they came? Which way did her and her friends come from? Is that what you ask her? Yeah. Well, she's okay. She, she thinks she thinks like really hard and she like points around at like all the different directions with her eyes closed. And then she, it seems like almost like she's using a, some sort of unseen divining rod as like, she's like, mm, and she points towards the West. The West? I don't know. Um, uh, you the should, South Door. The, the, name, the name, both of her names should also give it away, but you can also tell by the, her facial structure as well that um, she's Arkantian. She's not Dorian. Yeah. Okay. Can she read Mithric? Because <laughs> you're, you're in, baby. <laughs> you're in. <laughs> Welcome uh, to the tea. John, John, I would like to um, reach into the reach into the sack and pull out. Uh, I don't know, like, w would they use? I know, like Romans, didn't they use like like oils to clean themselves, like and like a scraping, a scraping thing? Mm -hmm. Frigil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like to pull out um, uh, one of those and some oil and say, hey, you know, you can uh, you can uh, you can clean yourself up a little bit. You know, you might feel a little bit better if you tidy up. She kind of smiles like a little, a, a, a little bashfully. She's like, "Don't look, don't look." Oh, of course not. Of course not. And she's, she's like under the, she, cloth, under the table. She like yeah, yanks. Yeah. She like yanks the, the 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 makeshift curtain closed as if she's in the fitting room. She's like shink, like really, you know, like don't look. You know, <laughs> she she shuts the door and she grabs the grabs your equipment, <laughs> and then she starts to hum behind the curtain. <laughs> Matt, pull her out of dress. <laughs> what? Oh, pull uh, her out a dress or something, something some nice, clothes. you know, little floral pattern. A turn has passed yeah. by this time. Yeah. Yeah. Like one of those gingham dresses with the little <laughs> ruffled sleeves. All right. You want to with the, with, okay. I got, yeah, I'm, I pull up one of those. It's getting weird guys. It's getting weird. <laughs> 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 what, so what do we do? We do, you, up, do you want to wait for her to clean herself? that mm -hmm. long or are you not gonna... helping okay all right so i'm gonna i'm gonna say so up to this point it's been a turn like i say i would say like uh -huh. traversing through the hallways getting through here talking to her is a turn yeah, yeah, yeah. and then it'll uh -huh. take another turn for her to um to do her ablutions i suppose why don't we yeah. back out of the room a little bit let her do that and we then agree on what we're going to trade like i think the ring is pretty important but boy do i want that go a girdle Okay, guys, I do have um, a detect magic uh, loaded in the chamber. I don't know if we want to 
if we want to use it now or not. But because uh, I'm coming, I'm have coming out a couple of turns, right? She uh, says, "I have this yeah. too. I have this." And she's like, "I," uh, she says, "I found this," and she, she, you could see just like a, an item get shoved out from underneath the from uh, you know, the curtain, and it's like a you hear like a shing, and a, a dagger, like a crude dagger, comes um, sliding along the floor. Um, what do you think, guys? I think, I think the ring, if if it's at all possibly the real deal. That's probably the highest priority item. Well, oh, I boy, have, that girdle looks good. Do we do we think that it's worth it? I can I can I can burn it up. You only sure. have the one. Uh, yep. Only have the one. Come on, man. Matt, <laughs> no, how long does it last? Two turns. Okay. And the so, radius is uh, sixty feet. I love it. I think that we you don't wait. cast it in this room. Let's go back to the room with the southern door. Maybe cast it there. Make sure there's no magical traps on that door. Maybe go running down to Turtle Room and see if we can find any magical items in that area. You know what I'm saying? Look, let's let's get some use out of it, not just cast it in this room. I, I have a, I have a question, right? If okay, we made a new friend. This is great. Um, do we want to go dunk our goblin in the strength pool? Yes, down we at the do. End? And that room is full of stuff in the niches. Right. So we can, that would probably be a good place to do all of this. She could then clean off too with the, with the water, like wash your hair. Mort's going first. Yeah. yeah Mort goes first. <laughs> uh, we can also look down that stairwell and see if the snakes brought anything up cool. Okay. Let's do that. You won't be able to see this. Well, I guess you could. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it might be worth it. Right. Might not. Let's so, go. Um, let's go. So, Okay, so she emerges right, so and I'll, she she doesn't look much better. Right. She's she's like scraped off what she could, but she doesn't seem to be aware of like how filthy she actually is. Right. Um, her hair hasn't been a, a you know d- done at all, but um, basically like the dirt has been scraped off of her, um, yeah. just revealing um, like a uh, 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 um, uh, 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 what do you call it a pre what's the word where you're you look older than you actually are. Um, oh, prematurely aged. Prematurely aged. Thank you. Yes, uh, prematurely lined face um, and yeah. uh, uh, okay. very pale, um, with big eyes. Okay, but still pretty dirty. Okay. All right. So more will be like. Um, so Lita, you want to come with us? You want to make a trade? What do you want? Tell you what. You want? We don't have to decide right now if you don't want. We can. We can leave. We've got some stuff we want to do, and then we're going to go out. Is that okay? You want to come with us? I, I want. Yes. Safe safety, I suppose. Yes. We go west, yep. though. Yes. Yep. Out. We, first, we got to go east, and we got to do a thing. Then we're going to go west. Yeah, you I know. Want, but we came from the east, and it's going to be okay. Do you want to? You can come with us, or you can wait for us here, and we'll hit you on the way back. We won't hit you. We'll I mean, you know you what up. I mean. I pick you oh, up. The, the dead things are east. The dead things are east. You don't want to go yeah, east. They are. We went past them. No, I stay here. I stay here. I stay, stay here. here. Okay. I don't. Okay. But I. Can you? Was can you? You wait for us just a little while. We. I will wait, but I fear that I say goodbye now. And she like she like reaches out and like clasps your hand more like real quick and like holds it real closely, and she's like, "You go with the gods." You go with the gods. You are blessed. I will Thank not you, see Lyad. you anymore. I will live here. You will. You will you all will. die. No, no, no. <laughs> Again. No, no. That happened last episode. But thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Okay. We'll come back. All right. So she stays here and you guys are heading east. Yeah. Just to go to the pool and Morton needs to take a bath. Okay. So this is explored territory. You can move at three times your movement rate if you wish to forego yeah. caution. Do you wish to forego caution? Uh, uh, let's let's keep our caution let's keep on. Caution. Let's keep caution. Now we use this roaming the halls. Caution switch on. We're moving at ninety, yeah. right? Yeah. Four, five, yeah. six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three. We'll call it a we'll call it a turn. Um, okay. So one more turn to get. Uh, you're just going making a beeline right towards there. We'll yeah. do the pool. Let's let's check out I mean, this, uh, the, those stairs on the way back after you've had your little bath. Okay. What stairs are you talking about, Matt? 
the the stairs uh you can't see uh my thing but the stairs that we went down when you were with us into the uh the turtle okay okay because that's where the snakes would have left anything if they found it i thought you were talking about leaving them on the platform i thought so too no 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 up up the stairs that we stairs of that hallway that's a much better idea that was, that's a much better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I see. Now it makes sense. Yeah. Oh, it all makes sense now. Okay. 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 So, yes. Ted, so, yeah, you weren't there for that episode. So, uh, real briefly, right. the door is broken open in a similar manner yeah. that the door was before. Um, and uh, there's a long stone bench that parallels each of the diagonal walls, right? There is the pool in the center. And at the far end, yeah. there is this strange red granite, eight foot tall shrine um, that has 11 right. niches that have been. You've got all the, okay. You got it all right. Yeah, yeah, I've been in the room uh, from when David discovered it. Okay, I was there for that. Oh, okay, okay. I just wasn't there for Goran taking a bath. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, like, me I, and Yost are going to be standing right on the intersection right here mm-hmm. and listening and watching. Okay, good idea. Everything's good idea. very quiet right now. Mort moves in. Are you going into the into the pool? I will take a bath in the pool. Okay. And pray uh, to uh, invoking the name of Arden. Uh, and um, uh, I, I say, um, you know, about purifying myself uh, and to uh, to be a defender and, and work the labors. Cool. So uh, and just to if, for piecing together your little puzzle of well, the, the route that people would take. Once again, the description says those who would take up the labors of the great defender must purify themselves. Uh, All right. Uh, oh, it's it's on your map. <laughs> okay, so it is. you. Yeah, that's why uh, I said those things. Nice. Okay, I should show them up to the <laughs> folks at home. Okay, so you get in the pool more, and uh, you can feel uh, the cleansing nature as all the exhaustion from from the third delve so far sort of melts <laughs> away, and uh, you do not, however, heal your wounds. Oh, but the strength in your limbs returns to normal. All right. Apart from the strength that I lost for uh, the death door thing, right? That's permanent. That's permanent. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But Eust- Eustace's damage um, is healed. All right. This is good. This is good. Uh, now, do do we want um, do we want me to detect magic on these things in here? I mean, I mean, all it's going to do is tempt us to take them. I mean, I'm kind of full up. I don't think any of them match up with anything we're actively looking for. And this is a pretty handy pool to have. I'd hate to corrupt it. Maybe we should leave it alone. All right. Okay. We can okay. leave. I mean, we ideally we're going to come back here at some point anyway and mess around. So, so a turn for the bet ba- for the bathing. Okay. Uh, just so you guys know, it is now one fifty PM. All right. Uh, Let's go back down the hallway if the coast is clear and duck down those stairways, uh, the stairway that runs to the turtle pit and see if the snakes left, left, left us any gifts. Okay, so going down there, um, uh, you've, you've been down there before. The same sounds of water lapping is uh, here is what you heard to the west as well. You've probably already concluded mm-hmm. that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, right? Yeah, Ted. I just want to say if Avarisius is going to go down that to go look for things, I think some of us should stay, like Mike suggested earlier, we should stay at the top of the stairs and keep listening and keep watch. Okay, cool. So, yeah. Um, you, can, you, you do hear, um, you can hear Lyda in the other room sort of talking to herself and mumbling and it's sort of moving, uh, vacillating between laughing and crying almost seamlessly. Um, uh but every goes as you go down and you take a look at the top, uh, like where the water's lapping up, you do see that the snakes have deposited a, a couple of new items. Uh, so Snake there, gift. there are three items. <laughs> okay. Two of them are gold pieces, and they are modern gold pieces, not solid eye. Okay. So two GP. The third item is a small bronze key. <clears throat> Please let that be the key to the southern door. Please. <laughs> I, I ask it. Are you the key to the southern door? What does it say, John? <laughs> it does the key nothing. say anything? Yes. <laughs> and all of your companions look at you strangely. There's, <laughs> there's, um, 
you have a feeling that this was the only things that the snakes could um, uh, put in their mouths, like and, and travel with. Yeah. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. Okay. No, this the, is uh, this is great. Good, the, good uh, job. Uh, I, 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 cannon they left behind. You're saying? Yeah, yeah they did. Yes. Plus yeah. five, holy yeah. avenger. A little too heavy. Yeah. I, I give the sticks a little pat. Good, good job, guys. Oh, that's true. They would be, there would be sticks right there. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, so guys, when you were in that lake, when you guys first went down in there and worked your way over to that platform, you did not see another tunnel to the north. So the tunnels no, are okay. under the water. They're underwater. Oh, they were under the water. Oh, yeah. I see. You go, yeah. You go I down see. and then up. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I just, so I just. Grabbed, yeah. Maybe the ritual here is like, I, I fail to see how it connects up with the ritual of the trials of the 12 columns, right? You know, but it's clearly part of this circular process you have to do. I, I wonder oh. if climbing through her nose is the, is the entrance to the thing. Like, I think the flooding happened later. No, I don't think so because it didn't, didn't we determine that the statue oh. was built specifically for that? Maybe not. Yeah, maybe nose. I'm hallucinating so that part. When you went up the nose chamber, it was not it, it was very narrow and claustrophobic and you kind of had to crawl on all fours. It was you know, it was it, definitely it not feel, like okay. yeah, like a ceremonial entrance or anything like that. You know what I mean? No, okay. but but if you came in and you bathed yourself in the pool, right? And then you go out that corridor and you go up that first staircase that you'd be on your left and you'd enter the room where we found the officer dead. Mm -hmm. From which you go into the trial by combat room and you exit through the the western room. Then you go north and you come around and then maybe you're supposed to go down into the lake for something. Because there's platforms and ledges down there that like feel like well, one of them has a staircase up to it. Like you would walk up the staircase and be at the platform and do something. And it's all it's I don't know. I'm it's just weird. speculating. Obviously, yeah. I didn't, you know, it's all very weird. But yeah. the, the the only break in that circle is that southern door. So mm -hmm. let's go try that key. Yeah, let's yeah. go. Let's go get okay. uh, pick up Lyta and see okay. if she still wants so to come. Pick up Lyta and we say, hey, Lyta, it's us. We're still alive. We made it. We made it. We did not go far. We did not go far. You're we did not go here. far. We're still here. Do you still you want ready? something? This. Yes, this, this, this. What do you guys think? The ring? I, the ring for getting out and the girdle for uh, will feed you? Uh, is, that, is that a bad deal for her? <laughs> <laughs> kind of is. Um, let's just get the ring for now, Ted, and then, you know, let's see what happens. Come on. All right, all right. I'll say, okay, Lida, I think that that's a very pretty ring, and I would be very happy to take you with us and get out of here. We'll trade for the ring, and then it's a deal, and then we got to do it. She goes, deal. <laughs> Slap her hand. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. And she okay, that's so she takes a little while. She's like, yeah. and she she pulls it off, and uh, she just kind of tosses it casually, like Luke tosses a lightsaber. You know, I mean, just it's like you you know, completely worthless at you. Here you right. go. Okay. And Sucker. if it is completely with us, that's fine. So now, uh -huh. when you actually have the ring at hand, Mort, uh -huh. you don't feel anything different or anything like that, but you can get a good look at it now. Okay. So uh, the ring is yeah. a heavy gold band, like a thick, like like masculine band, right? Um, with an oval disc of gold in the face. And then in the center of the oval disc is an intaglio of amethyst. Okay. There is an inscription on the gold disc, right? So the, the setting of, in which the amethyst is in, okay? Um, and it reads the following, and it says, Nunc defensus est, which translates into, now she must be defended. And the carved amethyst, of which this inscription surrounds, is in high detail Arden the Defender in the same pose as the Colossus outside. So it actually looks like Arden the Weary, right? So it shows her. This is the intaglio carving? The intaglio, yeah. So it's kneeling with a sword. and uh, She's kneeling with a sword in one hand and an outstretched palm in the other. Quite beautiful, carved in amethyst. Fairly high. Oh, so it's actually like a, like a little sculpture, like a little three-dimensional sculpture of her? Etched into the, in, into etched the amethyst. It. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. 
And does that have any inscription on it or anything around that? It does not. But like surrounding that, right, on the oval, yeah. nunc, nunc defect, yeah, sure. defensive yeah. est. Does, does that position of Arden the Weary with her hand outstretched match the giant one outside? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I just said. You literally just said that. Oh, you yeah. did? Mm -hmm. I was typing. I'm yeah. sorry. That, that pose is known as Arden the Weary. It's right. one of the common depictions of her. Mike, Mike, when you take copious notes, you can criticize. It's all right here, bro. It's all the recall from Mike. Is it though? Is it though? Right yeah. See, I, I what listen. Did we I'm mentoring? listening. I'm what always processing. What day was that? Was it a Taz day, Mike? Was it the 27th of Lucrios? That's been Taz noted. Day, a warm, sunny spring day? <laughs> oh, you wouldn't remember because your character died. Okay, so I'm, oh, I'm a big like, picture guy, Ted. I'm a big picture guy. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So, for the purposes of I just did, making a, an analog for your for your visual representation, uh, you can kind of picture her as sort of like a female golem. So she tags along with you in yeah. the back, um, yeah. always sort of slightly muttering to herself. Although she will shut up if you tell her to shut up. Like she's she's you know. She's aware. She's not going to give us away. Yeah, and, right. but she prefers to actually sort of crawl on all fours whenever she can. Yep. She will okay. stand up if you ask her to, but she just is more comfortable in that way, and she definitely tends to stay as far away from the torch or the lantern bearer as possible. So um, her, her mortal enemy right now is Elizabeth. Um, so she tries to hang back as much as she can, although you can tell her to be in a formation somewhere else, and she'll put up with it. Um, she has a dagger. Yeah, right. uh, and you should know. I'll just tell you. She has three hit points. She has an AC of okay. nine. Okay, and she is basically useless as a as a combatant. Um, although she will defend herself if she has to, um, and she will be crazy about it when she <laughs> when she has to. Um, but uh, don't get be under any impressions that she somehow like rages and becomes fucking awesome whenever she's cornered. Like she'll she'll get you know eaten. A, she, she, you know she'll be destroyed. So, so basically, she's um, you know uh, more tough than Darius right now. <laughs> Technically, yes. Um, uh, my point being, though, is that she is she is uh, she is someone that needs to be protected. She is not like a retainer or anything like that. She's like a yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's like a bird. Uh, basically. Okay. So, John, there there weren't sunglasses really back then, but can I pull out like a a, a veil or something that that she could wear that would kind of help the the light not bother her so much? Uh, yeah, like, I could see that. Yeah, sure. Right, and just, she likes just it. She weird it. again, Matt. It's getting weird again. Now you're trying to marry her. <laughs> she's um, <laughs> she she's actually thinks of she takes it as like a like you're offering her a gift, uh -huh. right? She kind of shy and gets bashful again. You know what I mean? It kind of smiles at you again, you know. And she uh -huh. seems to be amazed that you're just sort of you you just pulled that out of the sack, like you know what I mean? Like you got you didn't have well, to I rummage know. around. You just sort of put a, put a hand in and pulled out a veil, and you're like, here you go. I've, I've been keeping this for a while. It looks like you could use it, you know, just when things get a little bright. Yeah. Um, so she looks like she doesn't really understand how to use it at first. So she kind of puts it in weird places, you know, and then you kind of have to direct her right where she puts it. And then she's uh, very fascinated by the by the sack. She's like poking it. Yeah. No, no, no poking. No sack <laughs> poking. That is the that is the rule. She giggles Don't and then pokes it one more, one more time. Sack. <laughs> <laughs> get weird again. Okay. Uh, okay, so continuing on to the west as you pick up Lyda. Um, so we'll start at the door of her room. And so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Do we want to, uh, we'll guys, do we want to, do we want to look south down that stairs or do we want to go straight to the, the door? I, I'm good, man. I've been downstairs just like those and it didn't end well. Let's just keep going. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, okay. I could ask, Lyda, have you ever been down those stairs? Lyda, you asked Lyda? Yeah, yeah, she, she many times. Just yesterday, I was there. Do you... Does it go to the same place as the other set of stairs? Yes, yes, to the lake. Anything interesting down there? Fish. Besides the demon, fish, fish, fish. and the demon. Yes, fish. the demon. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Lida. Um, we'll keep going. You could, you could probably, based upon her descriptions, you could probably map that out. So it's a, it's an exact symmetrical um, thing of the of the right corridor. Right. Okay. okay. Uh, with the stairs and everything, uh, exiting out just like you, just like Matt put it um, earlier. However, using two turns, you end up uh, back into that uh, that entrance chamber with the five corpses, with the door to the south. After two turns, so now it is uh, two ten p.m. Right now, Lita, have you have you tried to open this door before? 
she she points questioningly at the door to the south. That one? Yes, locked. the one to the south. Locked. Oh. Locked. But okay. I remember I remember I came I think I came through that door. You thought you might have. All right. This is promising. With friends? With friends? Yes, I think with friends. I can't remember. With those were those uh, the uh, your friends back in the room where you were staying? What was left of them? She gets like really like defensive, and she kind of scurries away. Ooh, like friends, gross! Like, I don't know what you, I don't I don't know what you mean. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Don't, you know. don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Um, okay. Uh, seems like this would be a good uh, door to check and see if it wants to kill us if we try to open it. What do you guys think? Well, I think Mort should take a listen. Uh, we already listened to my We already listened at the door, and yeah. we already checked for a draft underneath the door with the torch, and none of those things happened. Right. So, oh, I thought Darius listened to the other door. Okay, fine. No. Then let's, I think uh, you let's should try that bronze key and see if it key. unlocks the door. Okay, who has the key? Do we want? Do we, do we want to look? Uh, like, to I would like to look carefully at the uh, lock mechanism for any kind of like holes that can shoot little needles out. I, I remember yeah. poor Atticus. You do not have yeah. the expertise. That is one of those things that is sort of locked away behind a class that only only thieves have the ability to actually determine the presence and danger of mechanisms like that because they're so finely com com complex. So, to you, it just so looks like a keyhole. Does, does Avaricius know that only thieves can do that? Or does he look at it and not see any traps and think, looks yeah. good? That's that's exactly what happens. Yeah, so Avaricius could, you could certainly look at it, but to you, you're just like, you're looking at it and you're like, yeah, that's a keyhole. Looks like it takes a key. <laughs> Okay. All right. I have Mark's an idea. Go if, I have an idea. If you're worried about that, Matt. I am worried about that. What is what is your idea? Okay, John, is the key got like a little bell with a hole at the end, like a traditional key? Uh yeah, basically. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, great. Let's uh you get a long thin stick, like a chopstick, put the key on the end of it, insert the thing, and then use it like that. So your hand is nowhere near the lock mechanism when you're when you're turning it. Oh, that's that makes sense. Idea. How are you attaching the key to the stick? Um, not me. I've got four hit points and I suck. I'm, I'm going to tell <laughs> no, somebody no. else. But My how, genius idea. How are you doing, though? I, I don't know. Oh, I can't, I can't you it's take a stick yeah. that fits into the hole at the end of the key, right, John? So now picture it as like a long vertical handle on the end of the key. Well, no, I, the key I isn't mean, like that. I guess I misunderstood. Like it's, it looks like a normal key with like a, you know, like a little bit of a bulbous end. And then, like the long, I don't know the term. So, at the parts, end, but, where yeah. the handle is, where your fingers go, yeah, is it like a loop, like a like a traditional key or a key like ring? A well, like a ring we're talking down. about Mike's talking about doing something that would be like L shaped, yeah, right. But how are you getting the key into the lock then? From well, the I mean, idea is that you're not standing in front of the lock; you're standing over here and going in like this, so that if something shoots out of the lock, it's shooting next to you. I know, but or if a needle comes I'm, out, I'm of the being lock. a little bit a bit pedantic about it, but I'm just picturing like a key that has you know a hole through the part where your fingers are, right? Mm -hmm. And if you stick a stick through it, the key's just going to be dangling loose on the end of it. So how do you get any leverage? Not if you have a stick. Not if you have a stick that fits that hole, right? Oh, so that you could tight. kind of turn it. Yeah. That's oh. tight in the hole. Yeah. Oh, John. Okay. Okay. Sure. So and, so and John, if the, key is shaped, out of that. if the key is shaped like that, right? Mm -hmm. Roughly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mike's saying. Stick a stick through it like that. It's just Wedged the same height. diameter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, it would have to be like really height. thick. Yeah, okay. I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, then, you know what? I, I do happen to have a stick that's exactly the same diameter as that little hole. That's right. <laughs> Surprisingly <laughs> enough, you actually probably could. Um, okay, yeah, I buy it. No problem. All right. So you know this sack is really good, guys. I don't know. You see, Light is like kind of crouched in the corner and giving you guys a look like, and they thought I was the crazy one as you have like this <laughs> fucking contraption as you're like <laughs> um, if it's called paranoia, Light, it's fine. <laughs> you guys ever meet my brother Atticus? My brother Atticus was a <laughs> he went down here and he never came back. <laughs> okay, so you uh you use that weird contraption and you insert the key um huh. and it fits in. Okay. So now and we then use the contraption. stick from the side and, and turn the key. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. I suppose it works. Somehow the physics isn't working for me somewhere in this, but I'll I'll, I'll go with it. 
um, yeah, you you managed to get the leverage somehow to turn that key in the lock, and it and it does appear to be the key to that door as you hear a snap. <laughs> yes, and uh, the snap Your of a lock. Thinking uh, with the snakes, man. Nothing happens with the door. You just you just hear a lock definitely like open. All right. How about how about Yost opens the door? Spirit the ready. Yes. I'm ready. Good. Okay, so Yost will go up. And I'm so going to I be get... in this intersection right over here, John, where the yep. <laughs> right over yeah. here. Got it. While well, they open the door. Yeah. That's so, probably a good idea for the rest of us to do here. Okay. Yost will, Yost will open the latch, and as soon as the like latch is like cleared the the strike plate, he'll push the rest of it open with his feet with his spirit the ready. Okay. Ah, and he opens it up. Bang. Yeah, um, that's he, right. He is faced with the base of a of a small staircase that rises up ten feet to the south. Woo. After ten feet, it hooks to the west. All right, give me a second here. Let's draw us. Okay, so us, baby. that's where we want to go. Wait, uh, we go like that for up, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, so it's ten foot corridor, and then it, it hooks to the after ten feet, it hooks to the west. Yeah, ten foot stairway to be clear it goes up and then it basically is at a landing and hooks to yep. the left okay more oops more stair or uh and then no, no more um, stair. right after that landing there is another 10 foot uh staircase that goes up that was my question okay so let's do so like right here correct okay right you are sir do do Elizabeth behind Yost shining her lantern, uh, shining up that second staircase can see that it also ends in a landing, uh, a 10 foot wide landing before hooking to the north once again. So interesting. John is, when we get up to that landing, can we look at the, the Western or the Eastern wall of that landing to see mm -hmm. if there's any, um, thing that could be a secret passage to the the, the, the pool is quite a bit yeah. lower if you're talking about getting a secret passage to that platform well it might be uh, up high but well, yeah so yeah, it's true uh kind of visualizing where you are spatially avaricious uh you can certainly do that if you want to spend a turn to look carefully yeah i, I think it might be worth it guys what do you think yes but i also want to look um before we go tromping through here on the floor for footprints, dust, um, anything like that? That's a good question. So uh, that's actually an excellent question, I, which I should have told you when you entered through the room. When you go through, the, when Yost goes through the door, um, actually I would say like a little puff of dust probably would come out uh, as he opens the door. And uh, it, it's completely filled with dust. Oh, John, I, I would uh, retrieve, I would retrieve the key also. There's the key, the okay, cool. Yeah. It's a, that's an unencumbering item. But I would know. Can we lock that door behind, behind us. us. You want to lock it Absolutely. behind you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, for all keys, probably for my ease of use as well, make sure you mark what door it opens um, on your character sheet. Mm -hmm. So you want yes, to give us a name for that door or any kind of like nomenclature we can use for the notes? Yeah. What's it? What's the name of this room actually called? I'll see if it's not spoilery. Uh... So you can Key call this the trials the, uh, chamber. It's a uh, it's it's technically an antechamber. So you could mm -hmm. say like Hall of Labor's antechamber key, maybe. That's okay. not too long. All of anti chamber Hall of Labor's antechamber key. Yeah. So this um, whole labor. passageway of stair of stairways is um is very dusty. Looks like no one okay. has been here for quite some time. That's musty. So, um, there's uh, the the especially after you close the door behind you, the sense of humidity and moisture in the air uh, disappears. Everything's very dry. Okay. So I okay. think that Mort and Yost should go first. Mort can stay ahead of the light and use his infravision, and Yost can just kind of keep a hand on his shoulder so he doesn't get lost in the dark. Um. And and we'll we'll scout up the stairs. Do you guys do you guys think it's worth it to look for the secret door to see if there's a way? Oh right, right. We were going to do that. Yeah. I mean, a turn. I don't think it's there, but I think it's worth trying because if it is probably, there, that'd be great. Probably not. Yeah, it would be. It'd be nice if it were. And he would he would look around like this is stonework, no frescoes or anything. 
a stonework. That's correct. Yeah, no frescoes. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. like learning from what we've seen before, he would check like the seams. Well, I guess he would. He would yeah. Check yeah. the seams. Mm-hmm. Wires, depressions. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> okay, so being if very careful based upon the knowledge. Do, if he's going to do the eastern wall, can I do the southern? Sure. Um, yeah, you, good idea. you spend a turn, and you both can conclude that there are no secret doors. Unfortunately, sorry. Okay. Yeah. That's all. okay. Continuing right, up so the stairs, Mort. Mort um, yeah. Uh, do you are you definitely want infravision only, or do you want Elizabeth back up? Um, I, mean, I think the idea is, point. what's that? One. You have one hit point, bro. But I'm the only guy with the infravision. I know, and I'm and it saying worked really is, well for us before. Let's let's yeah, just when put we had two people. Yeah. When we had two people, and one of them was a big HP sponge. I don't know if that's a. Yost is a pretty good HP sponge. He's right there okay. with, with more. All right. Okay. Okay. As okay. long as Mort's behind him. Goblin one, <laughs> goblin get, baby. Okay. So Mort, um at the <laughs> top, so at that second landing, you can see that the corridor yeah. goes north, but it is a it looks to be a final staircase that is larger than the other ones. It goes up for 20 feet. It's 10 feet wide. Before it ends um, at a door. However, this door is unlike the other Arcantian doors you've seen before, which are heavy wood with banded iron, right? Which is like the door that you came through. Yeah. Um, this door is stone, but it doesn't appear to look to have been formed in a way that it looks like it was meant to like blend in with the Arcantian stone to be hidden like a, st- a secret door. It's you know, it's it's got a jam that's been carved out. You know what I mean? It's but it's like a solid stone door, unadorned. But you can see it's like solid as a rock, right? Like, rock. Yeah. is there any kind of handle or latch or anything to that we can we obviously like grab onto or push or pull? Uh, no, turn but there are anything? obvious hinges, so you can kind of tell like how it swings. Now, um, so we approach this door. Let's bring the light up, and if he puts his hand on the door, does it? Is it like? noticeably colder like there's something cold on the other side or for example uh, like a, is there water leaking around it or anything like that good questions but no it's it's cold like stone would normally be but not abnormally right. so okay is it is it sealed so tight that no air can get underneath it or anything like that is there any kind of a breeze coming from there or anything uh, there's no breeze but you wouldn't say it's like um like seamless you know what i mean there there is a little bit of a gap you know yeah. right very small and no but, light coming from under it no light and uh so mortal give it a listen okay slap his big old goblin ear up on that takes a turn oh, you okay with that could he could he hear yeah. better if his ear was down by the by the crack i mean it's a stone door i don't know if it makes a difference uh listening is listening basically it's assumed yeah. that you're listening at the best possible spot but taking a turn you do not hear anything yeah okay so the question is does this lead to like under the waterfall chamber or does it lead to more dungeon? I mean, we gotta, we gotta try anyway, John, is there anything, options here. anything around the edge, John, um, specifically, like, I'm, I'm just wondering, like, you know, we've seen that, uh, oval depression before. Mm-hmm. Is there anything around the, the jam of this door that, um, we could, uh, give a hint about how to open it? Unfortunately not. No. Does it look like you could just push it open? Uh, you could. It, it, it's got hinges. There is a gap, so it looks like it definitely. You could tell. You know. It. it you know. It, you well, unlike the other. Remember how I have my general rule? Like it swings whatever way you want it to swing, right? Um, this one um, actually definitely swings inward into whatever's beyond. Okay. So it pushes it's, away from us. Away from you, correct? Can okay. I search for can I search for any kind of traps above the door as if it's going to drop like a block on us or anything like that? Like a room trap sort of thing? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, do assassins have that skill? And not, no, not, not, as not a, a discreet skill. skill. Yeah, that's it's OK. Yeah. Everyone can still try that, by the way. So don't feel like just because you don't have a thief that you can't try right. thiefy things because you're adventurous right. and you're used to this shit. Um, so, yeah, definitely tell me um, uh, looking for traps will be. Uh, well, so you could say it's the same turn that Mort um, listened. Okay. And you can determine that, the, right. uh, it, at least on this side of the door, it is not trapped. Okay. Or there's and, no room. Uh, no, I should say it's not. There, there there are no room traps here. There's nothing. Yeah. Right. And there's no lock mechanism set into the stone door, correct? No. All right. Have Yost use his spear to like push that fucker open, dude. 
Yeah. And the rest of us, why don't, why don't we back up a little bit just in case yeah. there's some kind of blowback? Okay. Yost yeah. carefully okay. pushes the spear. Um, and op- or if you, sorry, Ted, are you okay with Mort doing with the Ted, with Yost doing that? Yeah, I think Yost would um, sort of stand so that he's not directly in the line of fire when the ballista opens up and shoots him. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. Use the butt of his spear to push it open. Okay. Uh, it opens quietly as if it's been well oiled for for all time. Just whoosh, opens up silently. Okay. Beyond darkness, Elizabeth's lantern illuminates a chamber that is twenty feet east to west by thirty feet north to south. Rectangular. Are we in the and center you, of that. And you are entering from the eastern part of the southern wall. Gotcha. Okay. okay. So 20 by 30, 30 north south. Yes. There is a door across the room that leads out. Uh, or I'm, you don't know where it leads, but but there's a door on the other side of the room um, that is closed that is on the um, western side of the northern wall. So it's sort of catty corner from where you're coming from. Okay. Okay. Those are the basic dimensions. However, uh, there are, first of all, a dozen battered and broken corpses that lie on the floor, of course, right? Interestingly enough, you can immediately surmise when la- when Elizabeth's lantern light pours over the floor that they are a mix of both ancient and modern people. Um, there are, uh, looks to be eight ancient Archontean legionnaires, a uh, one person that appears to be a modern male adventurer of some sort, two scaled, bipedal, yet dressed creatures that look to be like upright bipedal lizard men, you would say. Part lizard, part man. In addition, there is a strange, strange thing that I actually have to look up because I don't know myself what this thing actually looks like. You know, that's a bad sign. (laughs) That's fine. <laughs> well, is that's it, it for tonight, guys. Thanks. <laughs> it is eleven fifty nine. No, it's important. We must continue for now until I give you the the exact description of this room. Hold on. Um, this is that one. Where is it? Ba-ba-ba. Where is the? There it is. Um. It looks like a strange mechanical spider. It has a spherical body that's about four feet in diameter with eight mechanical legs. And uh, four of the legs have some sort of weird pads on the ends of them. And two of them have pinchers up front, like arms, basically. Uh, But they're made out of like metal. The body itself has a hinged lid. And there is a weird faceted gem that is attached to the top of the body. Okay. Now, why why are you so... uh, What's going on? What am I missing? They're they're waiting to get killed by this thing, John. No! Apparatus of Qualish! Apparatus of Qualish! Apparatus of Qualish! Um... Often read about, never encountered. Never seen. Oh well, I, my god! I, I hate to to spoil the thing, but it is not unfortunately large enough for a being to fit inside. Oh, it's relatively small. I was gonna go get <laughs> that turtle, turtle man. I was gonna go back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry about that. Oh. It's and, and it's basically like go. upside down, like a spider who's died, like where like the legs are sort of up, right, and the body's on the ground. But it's very, very strange. Now, I want to make clear that it is not like that smooth, ultra modern white plasteel of like the spaceship right. architecture, right? This is like a it's like a very is more like a steampunk sort of thing, right? Like yeah. lots of gears and mechanical metal and stuff like that, right? Um, very, very strange looking. You've seen nothing similar to the spaceship. You've never seen anything that looks remotely like this anywhere in your lives ever. It's very, very strange. Um, Matt, this is the room to cast the tech magic on, bud. <laughs> now there's there's more. There's more. 
Um, oh, okay. In the center of the uh, of the chamber. Okay, well, okay. <laughs> There's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot in this very small room. Uh, the eastern and western walls of the chamber have 10-foot-tall carvings of a stylized face of Arden. A face, not the body. Um, uh, it looks very similar to the face on the cliff and in the grotto in the fact that it's helmeted and braided. Um, and she's looking on either side into the center of the room. There is an inscription in two foot tall, once again, silver filled mithric letters that occupies the north well next to the door to the north. Oh, oh well. How unfortunate. In the center of the chamber is a 10 foot tall uh, stone statue that is has been carved to look like Arden. However, strangely enough, she's wearing legionary gear, but strangely enough, instead of her spear, which is her signature weapon, in both of her hands that are resting at her sides are hammers carved from stone. These are the labors of Arden. Um, and uh, she's just sort of standing directly in the middle of the room, 10 feet tall. And the door that you came through, as you look at the other side of it, you can see that this side of the stone door has actually been carved into another face of Arden. And when you all mosey on into the room, that face actually, the lips part and a voice, a female voice speaks from Arden's face in that door and it speaks in Mithric. Oh! Hey, Lida. <laughs> Lida, do you understand Mithric? Hey, Lida, do you understand Mithric? She just shakes her head, and but she looks like terrified and she's hiding behind Avaricios's leg. Oh, man. <laughs> And we'll close we'll we'll it down it. off that brief apparatus high that I had there, man. I, yeah. that was even uh, if I'd taken a thief, man, and had read languages, I wouldn't be able to understand what she just said. I guess it's spoken. Yeah. Uh, right. You guys are all entering the room, correct? Hold on. <laughs> Tricky I mean, I John. Say, yeah. Do these people <laughs> on the on the road on um, these people on the on the floor look like they've got crushed by giant hammers? Uh yes, actually. Okay, I'm not going in there. <laughs> <laughs> good question. Good question, Darius. This, this seems like a good a good time for someone else to take the lantern and let Elizabeth take out the uh, coffer of uh, Yakin's bones. Okay, Why so we'll, throw a chicken in there, dude. So let's let's stop it. Let's stop here, so you guys can make yeah. plans. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I want to set the scene for next time, just so we know where we are. I'm going to assume then that that Yost has basically pried open the door with this not pried, but pushed open the door with the spear. And Elizabeth is directly behind him with a lantern so that you can get the bead on what's going on, but no one has actually physically stepped into the room. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay. Okay, so I would actually say that you probably would not have seen the face on the other oh. side of the door, but we'll say it actually spoke. So you just heard it. You heard something speak on the other side of the door, but you didn't actually see yeah, yeah. what it was. Okay? Yeah. All right. So we will call it there. Um, oh, my God. Pretty cool stuff, but good progress. Good progress. Oh. Ooh, oh my God. How many rooms is that, guys? And you found a friend. Isn't that nice? We made it. We made yeah. a nice friend. Yeah, I'm sure now, everything's fine. We'll talk about it in the detox. Yeah, we'll talk, about, <laughs> talk about the detox. Okay, that was a lot of fun, guys. That was episode 49 of uh, 3D6 Down the Lines Mega Dungeon Crawl: The Halls of Arden Vool. Don't forget next time, it's episode 50. People, 50 wow. Wow. episodes of Arden Vool, which is pretty amazing. So we'll probably do something special to celebrate. Maybe a TPK. That'd be great. No, 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 we get out. That's what happens. On the, we get out. So we'll see what happens in episode 50. The, the, the onus is on the players to make it memorable. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so don't forget, you've been watching 36 Down the Line. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Please spread the word in all social media if you possibly can. Tell your friends and yourself to please join the public Discord if you, ha if you want. We've got tons of uh, much, much uh, more... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? A membership than I anticipated having. We're having like a lot of great conversations there. So please come in and join the fun. It's a lot. Of, it's going to be a great time. And until next time, have a great week, everybody. And we'll see you there. Bye now. Bye-bye. Thanks, John. Thank you, John. Thanks, John.